What's up and welcome back to a unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. We've got the Legion Pro 7i with the i9-13900HX and the RTX 4090 175 watt GPU. This has some of the highest performance specs, not quite the most performance, our highest performance specs is there is the higher i9-13980HX and there are technically uh, laptops with faster memory, for example. This has uh, DDR5 5600 in it, um, but overall, this is like 97, 98% as fast of a computer as you could possibly get or pretty close to that. Um, and it's in a fairly portable package, definitely in the high performance laptop category given its thickness and weight and the fact that it's a 16 inch display. But overall, I'm psyched because this Legion Pro 7i is awesome. Now I, I am talking from the perspective of someone who owned a Legion 7i for the last two years. I've recently switched to the Blade 18, um, but overall I had a good experience with my Legion 7i with minimal problems, minimal crashes, um, minimal build quality concerns. This Pro 7i is actually a downgrade in certain ways. Uh, for example, there's no longer a glass touchpad, but a plastic touchpad, and I'll talk about that today. Um, I'll talk about uh, a few other things like the thickness increase. This one's a bit of a thicker, beefier one uh, than my Legion 7i, but it's also got higher power limits, which correlates to the thickness increase, right? Because you get a thicker laptop, you get a little bit more power in there. We're going to be testing the laptop in tons of different ways. We're going to do benchmarks. We're going to test the CPU. We're going to test the display. We're going to test... Uh, over 10 different games today. And of course, we are going to take the bottom off and test our speakers. I'll show you the keyboard in action, how to customize the keyboard backlight and what it looks like in the dark. We're gonna see how bright the display is with the NITS brightness checker and color gamut checker. And um, yeah, and, I'll, and at the end of all of this, there will be detailed summary or like a quicker summary. So if you have a limited amount of time, please at least check that out because that should basically include um, everything we're gonna talk about today. Um, at least a lot of the most important things, but uh, obviously watch the full thing. If you want all of the details on this laptop and uh, feel free to skip around, there will be timestamps down below once this video has been live for a few minutes. So I see a bunch of people hopping in the chat. It's awesome to see. Welcome to the live stream, everybody. I'm really excited to review the Legion Pro 7i. Um, I don't know if it's gonna win my heart away from the Blade 18, though I, I don't think so. Uh, but it is certainly a bit more portable in some ways compared to the Blade 18, and yet it has that number pad, which I love. I love a number pad, I love a good keyboard layout, and Lenovo probably has arguably the best keyboard layout out of any laptop currently um, out there, including bigger laptops. And this is a 16 inch laptop, but the keyboard's just like perfectly spaced, just all the functionality that you'd want pretty much. Um, so I love to see that. Anyway, um, let's go over the specs, uh, how much this guy cost me and where you can buy one of these as well. Um, so first of all, let's go over the specs of this guy. So. Uh, I'm going to have to go here, go here, got to get my browser to get detected. There we go. All right. So, so this is the Legion Pro 7i. I did get my hands on this laptop at the beginning of the year at CES. This laptop features uh, some of the highest performance components on the market. And that means we've got an i9-13900HX, which is a 24 core, 32 thread, uh, CPU. That's a, a whole lot of performance. Uh, eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores. Um, so those eight performance cores are hyper-threaded. The efficiency cores are not. We have the RTX 4090, 175 watt. Um, and that the 175 watt is the highest performance you can get. This is a laptop GPU. It's not a desktop GPU. And if you want the correlation to desktop performance, it's very close in performance to something like the RTX 4070 Ti or like a stripped down RTX 4080 in terms of its CUDA core counts. Uh, it's just like a lower power RTX 4080 pretty much. Um, and it is phenomenally uh, should have phenomenal gaming performance to be able to play basically any game at QHD and most games at 4K. Uh, 16 gigs of VRAM will get you uh, no problem in VRAM limitations except for s extremely rare circumstances like in 4K gaming if you're trying to try to take this to a 4K TV or monitor. Um, that's going to be the only situation really where VRAM is going to be an issue, uh, at least currently, maybe in the future, it'll be more of an issue. We have 32 gigs of DDR5 5600, uh, configurable in here, but we actually only have 16 in this unit. 
Uh, so know that we only have 16 total gigs. Uh, certain games does uh, benefit from 32, so do keep that in mind. We do have a one terabyte SSD in here, and it's a QHD 240 hertz, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so that's 2560 by 1600 with 500 nits brightness, and it's supposed to only be about 100% uh, sRGB, which is going to be a lower color gamut than most of the high-end laptops, which is partially why this is priced on the lower end. Now, there are some talks about um, being able to buy this with a mini LED. Uh, some people in the last live stream were talking about how you can get this with a better quality display. This is not that upgraded display, um, and I'm not sure exactly where you can buy the mini LED version. It might be only certain markets. Um, not sure. Chat. So, anyway. That's the overview of this laptop and the specs uh, in it. I think the top competitors uh, against the Legion Pro 7i are gonna either be other value RTX 4090 laptops like the Omen 17, which is actually a little bit cheaper for a similar spec configuration, um, or you go something that's even more premium that is, uh, you know, has the glass touchpad, has Windows Hello. This doesn't have Windows Hello. Um, it has maybe a higher color gamut display and maybe a brighter display. So like the MSI GT77 with mini LED, the SCAR 16 with a mini LED, um, the Blade 16 with a 4K 120 Hertz mini LED. All of those have premium features and options and all of those have Windows Hello. This one does not have those premium features and options, but with this one, you're getting some of the best value performance and bang for the buck in an RTX 4090 laptop. It's close to it. I think the Omen 17 is gonna be just as competitive, uh, if not beating this one out in terms of just straight bang for the buck. But if you can get the Legion Pro 7i uh, on a sale where you're getting a nice discount on it, uh, you can get that price to drop below 3000 for the RTX 4090 variant. Um, occasionally, I know there was a price bug where I saw someone get a 4090 version for like 2600 because of combining a, a, a coupon plus a, a price bug. They got it like $400 cheaper than it was supposed to be or something like that. So. Um, Congrats to those of you that got that deal, but uh, most people are not gonna ever get that deal. So uh, most people are gonna pay over $3,000 for a 4090 version of the Pro 7i for even the baseline config. Um, but as time goes on, I'm sure there'll be other great deals and other coupon codes. And so be sure to check out uh, my laptop list. We're gonna be putting those coupon codes and deals uh, up at the top. Uh, we're gonna modify this and change this uh, some more. And basically, uh, my goal is to be able to put all of the uh, like coupon code uh, filter so that way people will be able to find those coupon codes as well in the top gaming laptop se uh, deal section here. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you're looking to shop around for RTX 4000 series laptops, this laptop list, which is linked down below, links to basically every single laptop you could possibly want to buy. Uh, this year, including a lot of RTX 3000 series laptops now. Um, we're still filling out the data in here. There's so much to fill out and I've been so busy live streaming and focusing on other aspects of my life. I need to get on top of this sheet and get it fully updated. Um, that, is one, that is one of my to-do lists here in May. I really wanna make this sheet as useful as possible for people. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, I think that covers everything. Let me check chat and we'll get into the unboxing portion of this live stream. I would invite you to like this live stream as well does help support my channel. If you want to see more of my content, please do uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Okay. Uh, okay. Avaro says, would you recommend buying this one or the 4080 version and save money? Great question. Right now you can get uh, a 4080 for $500 less than the 4090. I do highly recommend the 4080 version over the 4070, 4060, and 4050 versions because of the VRAM that the 4080 and 4090 versions have. Now, I do think that you're gonna run into VRAM limitations even at 12 gigs at QHD eventually, and even in certain titles now, you're still running into those VRAM limitations. So if you can swing it all the way up to the 4090, I do think it is the worth the worthy upgrade or the worthwhile upgrade because it is a noticeable performance jump in the 15 to 20% range. Uh, and then the increased VRAM also gives you future proofing for your QHD resolution. That said, either the 4080 or 4090, they're still, I think, very good options. And they both don't have much VRAM limitations right now. Uh, and they'll be fairly future proof. But the 4080 version, you're just gonna have to be willing to turn down textures sometime in the near future or even in certain titles right now. They're even running into 12 gig VRAM limitations at QHD, especially if you're running native um, resolutions. Okay, did I get the switchable keycaps? No, uh, plastic on the exhaust looks ugly. 
Um, I think it's kind of hard to tell, honestly, in person if it's a forty, uh, if it's plastic or metal. Um, Klaus KitKat says the forty seventy is awesome already. My only problem is the CPU temperature. So the forty seventy has tons of performance in that GPU. It's just it's only eight gigs of VRAM. And at QHD resolutions, like in the Legion series, you're going to run into 1% uh, low stutters uh, in a lot of the modern games. And so you're going to have to turn down the textures. That's the only downside about going with the 4050, 4060, or 4070. I really wish it had more uh, VRAM. So if you're going to go with those uh, lower end GPUs, I do tend to recommend getting a full HD or full HD plus display instead for resolution. Um, or just be willing to fiddle with settings so that you get no 1% low stutters. If you're willing to fiddle with the settings, then yeah, you can get QHD resolution, just no certain games are gonna need a lot of tweaking. Um, so yeah, anyway, all of that said, let's get into the unboxing. This is awesome. Thanks so much everyone for hopping by the live stream and thank you so much for your support. Uh, for me, as a content creator, it means the world to me. Like seriously, thank you guys. I couldn't do this without you. When should we expect the Ryzen 9 7945HX Legion Pro 7 review? Great question. Not sure. Well, I would love to do one. I would love to do a head to head, but I don't know if, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. So here's the box. We've got like a plastic Legion uh, kind of emblem on it. This is exactly what it shipped in. This was the external box. There was only one box, it was not a multi box setup, uh, but the laptop arrived just fine. Um, as you'll see on the inside, it is a, uh, it has foam padding just like, okay, there we go, okay. It has foam padding just like the Legion Pro 5 review that I did uh, a couple days ago. So here it is, let's go ahead and take this up. Voila. There's the inside. Let's raise the camera up a little bit more. Okay, so here it is. We've got the laptop inside of a cloth, like bag, basically. Um, it's not waterproof or anything. We've got this like one inch foam all the way around the laptop inside of the box. Let's take a look at the power adapter. So here's the power adapter. Um, we've got the cable and power adapter in this box. Here is the cable. It is about a six foot long cable and it is a very thick cable. Um, very uh, girthy. It's gonna, that's gonna basically allow lots of power to go through the cable. Um, and here is the power adapter. You can see it is fairly small. It is a smaller power adapter than the Pro uh, 5. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off. Uh, Skyborg wants to know how much is the battery life for this laptop? It's gonna vary a lot depending on how you optimize it, but it's in like the four to six hour range for web browsing depending on how you optimize it just because of the high amount of cores on the CPU and the QHD display. And yeah, it's just not gonna be that high of a battery life. If you really optimize it, turn all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off, you could probably get more than six hours out of it, but not too much, right? It's not really a, a portable high battery life type of a laptop for sure. Okay, 330 watt power brick. So 330 watt power, but we've got the Legion logo on there. I like that. Uh, here is the, the back of it. And this thing is probably the second smallest power brick I've seen so far. Um, let me go ahead and put this box away. And let me get the laptop out and we'll also compare power bricks and laptop size here, okay? Okay, so here's the laptop. Take this guy off. Boom. Look at that, you got the Legion logo right here. It's a all metal chassis for the most part. Uh, minimal plastic on it. Maybe some of these accent pieces are plastic. 
Uh, but it feels extremely sturdy in the hand, like a very premium laptop. Lifting it up, we've got this uh, white fiber cloth. We'll put that to the side. So there's the laptop right there. Let's close this for now. We'll set this to the side. And let's go ahead and compare sizes against some of the common laptops out there. So you can get a better idea of like, is the SCAR 16 bigger, smaller, all of that jazz. All right, so um, first let's go ahead and do the power bricks. All right, so you can see the Razer power brick is only a little bit smaller. It's actually surprisingly similar in size. I would say the, the Razer power brick is maybe like 10 or 15% smaller, uh, but it's very similar in size. This is the Asus power adapter right here. So I'll, I'll put that on this side. But you can see the Asus power adapter is noticeably taller and wider. And then there's of course like the GT77 power brick power adapter, which is gonna be even bigger than this guy, another half inch on each side probably. So um, I really like this Legion Pro 7i power adapter. It's uh, the second smallest so far for 2023. Okay, let's go ahead and compare laptop sizes now. So we have the Legion Pro 7i right here. All right, so starting with the Razer Blade 16. <clears throat> so the Blade 16 is the smallest 16 inch laptop. That's a full TDP power laptop. And uh, it's definitely probably the laptop to beat in terms of size comparison. So the, the laptop, the, the Blade 16 is about, I don't know, a quarter inch narrower on the side just a little bit narrower, and then about three quarters of an inch uh, shorter on terms of depth. And then in terms of thickness, the Blade 16 is also noticeably thinner, but not by a lot. Like it's gonna be thinner, but not like by a huge margin. Um, I'd say the back here is maybe two tenths of an inch thicker on the Legion Pro 7i. It's really not that big of a difference. Um, <clears throat> But for people seeking the ultimate in portability, the, uh, the Blade 16 certainly has an advantage. All right, so I'm gonna put the smaller laptop on top. This is the Strix G18 right here. I wanna point out that the uh, Legion is quite a bit smaller on both the width and the depth. We're pretty close to lined up here. Let's try to get it, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we're lined up and you can see uh, you know, the Legion is a little over an inch narrower in terms of depth or a little uh, shallower, about an inch shallower and about an inch and a half narrower in terms of width. That's a pretty big difference in terms of size. All right. And then last but not least, we have the SCAR 16. And these two should be very similar in size. The SCAR 16 is basically identical in terms of depth. It like feels almost exactly the same depth. And also in terms of width, I think the SCAR 16 is just a hair smaller. Um, and then on the sides here, you can see we've got uh, about the same width, uh, or sorry, about the same thickness as well. Almost exactly the same thickness between the SCAR 16 and the Legion Pro 7i. So that's a good, um, I think that's a good, size comparison for you guys. Let's go ahead and 
move on to taking the Legion Pro 7i apart. So, let's see, there it is. All right. Okay, so, taking the Pro 7i apart. All right. Um, Turbo Man says, have you seen the Micro Center version of this? It seems like a great deal. Uh, I, have, I have not looked at Micro Center. I don't really follow them. That said, Micro Center, I have bought electronics from them in the past. It has been just fine. Um, yeah. WT Life says, I saw in some videos that the actual output of this power adapter is only about 305 watts, so it causes the battery power to drop in custom mode. So, uh, I, was it UWT Life that was talking about that in the last stream? Someone was talking about how their battery life was dropping when playing games. Um, so this is Phillips head screws on this, by the way. So all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver to take this apart, plus something to pry the laptop apart. Um, the, key, the key when dealing with a power adapter that's under supplying power to the laptop is you either have to reduce the amount of power the laptop is using, or you have to upgrade the power adapter. Usually that's the, one of the two situations, and if, we're, if, the, if it's not configured correctly, it can drain the power from the battery to help supplement the power the system needs to operate. And that's usually not a good thing, right? So I hope we don't run into that issue today. We might, we'll have to keep an eye out for it. You know, we're gonna be plugged in um, and we're gonna be running in performance mode. Uh, I don't think we're doing custom mode, but uh, if you are running into that power adapter draining the battery issue, then the key is to honestly just try to reduce the power usage of either your GPU or your CPU by like five to 10, 15 watts and see if that fixes it. Um, and uh, you know, it could also be that some users have a bad power adapter, but most likely it's that the system wasn't designed to put out that much uh, juice through that power adapter and the power adapter just can't keep up and then it uses the battery life of the laptop to help supplement the power. And that's not really a good situation to be in. I hope we don't have that happen to us today because uh, that does make the laptop a bit harder to recommend um, when that happens. So, okay. Let's see if we can pry this laptop apart. The, the only thing that sucks <laughs> The only thing that sucks about Micro Center, and this is just me being totally real with you as a content creator, Micro Center refuses to work with content creators. They use their um, sales guys on their floor, on the sales floor, and they give commissions to the sales guys on their floor instead of content creators. And they just don't wanna work with content creators. Um, and affiliate sales is one of the ways the content creators like me make a living. I think Micro Center is a pretty good company. And I think, I mean, that's all me being honest, even though it's going to hurt me as the bottom line, you know, um, I don't mind saying it. Uh, so it just sucks that they're not willing to work with us because the, I wish they would consider giving the content creators the percentage that their sales guys get when we're the one directing people to uh, their laptop, uh, to, the, to helping close the deal. You know what I mean? Um, that said, if you, if you want to uh, help support me as a content creator, you can choose to buy through the link in the description. That'll help support me as a content creator, but don't feel bad if there's a better deal somewhere else, like at Micro Center or your local computer shop, buy your laptop where it's cheaper for you. Like, and I'm, I, I will be okay <laughs> if you don't use my link, but know that if you do use my link, you also need to use a browser that allows you to have cookies tracked, like Google Chrome without any ad blocker. Um, and that would allow the uh, Lenovo to know that I had directed you to, to buy it if you, do, if you do end up buying it. And I do that with all of my laptop reviews, so it's nice and fair. And when you guys end up do buying a laptop, it lets it an easy way for you guys to support me as a content creator. Okay, so I'm gonna need to focus here. <sighs> okay, how do we get this thing open? It's not, it's not really wanting to pry up very easily. 
There we go. You really got to use a good amount of force. I'm in there just barely, not enough to actually get it to open. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit better prying tool. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we got it up. So you have to use a pretty good amount of force. You want to use a gentle tool kind of like this, though, uh, like the guitar pick. And then you want to use a more firm tool to get the prying to continue to come up. Uh, Skyborg says the link in the description is the one to the 4080. Uh, actually, no, it is the 4090. You just have to click uh, add to cart or build or whatever. Then you, you customize it. It, uh, you have to add the upgrade to the 4090. It's $500 more. But you have to actually add that. They're under the same link, the 4080 and 4090 versions. Like, I, I just try to be real with you guys about the whole affiliates thing. You know, like a lot of, a lot of content creators hide the fact that they run affiliates. I don't. I, I bring it up into the foreground and forelight and know that I tell my audience, you know, if you want to help support me, that's one of the ways that you can do it. And if, if you, uh, you can support me in other ways too, just by subscribing and watching my videos, that all supports me. Sharing my videos, that helps support me. Um, ultimately, however you choose. Some people donate too. Uh, however you choose to support me, I'm just happy to have you along. And thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I've been able to turn this into my career, which is pretty mind blowing for me because I was just a laptop enthusiast for so long. So, so yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get this part to open right around the vents here. And I'm not sure if this plastic piece goes with the bottom or not. So I don't know if I should pry. I don't know if I should pry on this side of the bottom piece or on this side of the bottom piece. I'm gonna try over here. Uh, yeah, I'm still struggling to get this to come up all the way. I guess I'll just try adding a little bit more force right here. There we go. Okay, so the this this plastic piece does come up. Right here, it separates. It's separate though. The, this side girder piece goes away with the bottom. All right, that's very important to know when you're taking this apart. Because that is not an easy piece to get to come up. There it goes, all right. Just honestly, just knowing that that is supposed to come up helps me take this bottom panel off so much more quickly. We're so close. This side over here snapped back together while we were unsnapping the other side. I'm gonna try to get in right here. Wow, this is definitely not the easiest laptop to get into this year, that's for sure. There we go. Okay, I think we've, have we got it completely loose now?
It feels like it, it should be completely loose, but it also feels like something's still snapped. Okay, yeah. So there was a middle, uh, middle panel thing that was snapped together in the center of the laptop. Just kind of felt like there was a screw that wasn't ready to come on, uh, that wasn't undone. Into the AM, there are sh there's a link in the description to this shirt. I just got this shirt recently. Really, I love it. I love their shirts. It's another way to help support me. If you like Into the AM shirts or you like good t-shirts, they have phenomenal t-shirts. So link in the description, 10% off through that coupon code and that does help support me as well. So here is the internals. Whoa. This is a really well engineered internal system. I really love it. Um, <clears throat> there's so much going on here and there's so much good stuff going on too. It's like so much, uh, such a great use of internal space. Like, wow. Okay. So first of all, we have this huge vapor chamber. Look at that goes all the way across um, the sides. And we have four fan exhausts, so big fan exhaust here, 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 and here, with two big fans. Love it. We have our CPU here, our GPU here, our VRM coverage right here. We have our SSD coverage here, another SSD right here, and we have our Wi-Fi slot right here. We've got our memory underneath this shroud, um, and we have a 99 watt hour battery as well as two large speakers. Really awesome interior for this Pro 7i. Some of the laptops this year, especially the more budget oriented laptops, just not a very good use of the internal space. Where this laptop has phenomenal use of the internal space, um, and you don't feel like you don't feel like you're randomly not getting use of some area to create a port. There's a lot of ports on this laptop. You have the double SSDs, you can access the sodium. Obviously, if you were to repaste this, they have a warning here that liquid and metal uh, is applied. So you're gonna wanna be careful when you're uh, opening this up. Obviously, any liquid metal application, you definitely wanna be careful. Don't want that spilling onto the motherboard uh, or you can damage things. Um, overall, love the interior. The upgradability is decent. Taking the laptop apart, not so great because it was a bit difficult um, the part that was really difficult was these edges right here. Um, I'm trying to turn this a little bit brighter on the brighter side. Yeah, this right here, this little lip was difficult because it gets it, it snaps around the side of the laptop with these little snip-ins. So you're going to need to like kind of get in here and pry it straight sideways, not down, but you got to go sideways and then down all the way around. And that pretty much is how you get into the laptop. And um, there's a pretty decent amount of ventilation in this bottom chassis as well. So you can get a lot of airflow into this laptop. Overall, really love the interior. It looks like a really design, a really well designed laptop inside. We also have our ribbon cable light or our ribbon light that goes along the front of the laptop. Um, there are no RGB lights in the fans this year, which is a big bummer to me. Um, and the light also no longer wraps around the sides. I wish the light also wrapped around the sides, but it does not. Um, overall, still, you get a decent amount of RGB, more than your average laptop. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And let's get it put back together and let's get into the, the rest of the testing. Um, after seeing those speakers on the bottom of the laptop, it really makes me interested to see uh, how those are going to sound. I think they're going to sound really, really good. Um, yeah. Okay, so getting this to come back together, I'm gonna to focus on the rear of the laptop and sides of the laptop, and I'm going to gently kind of pull this down, kind of with my fingers. I might end up using this guy. Uh, just kind of hook it. So on, on this side, we're already in. I'm just going to pop that in. And then on this side, we just got to kind of pull the laptop down and around and get it to snap in. There we go. Looks like that snapped in all automatically. The front snaps in really, really easily. And there's a middle snap in as well. You got to make sure you get this middle one popped in. Putting it back together really wasn't that bad. Just taking it apart 
the key is you gotta pry this away and then up and uh, you know away from the laptop. So horizontal first and then you get your uh, vertical movement. So let's go ahead and get these screws put back in. Okay. So when you're putting these screws back in, be very careful to put the correct screw into the correct hole. Or like if I put this screw, this long screw, through the one of the front holes, you'd probably literally just like put the bat, you know, you put the screw into the battery or something, or maybe the motherboard. And that's obviously gonna damage the internals really, really badly. You end up with a broken laptop. Three more screws. You know, one thing that is definitely very noticeable about this version of the Pro, uh, the Legion, compared to the 2021 version I owned, this is a very dark metal. Uh, whereas the one I had was more like a silver aluminum gray type of a, a look. And this is more of just like a very businessy, almost like a black type of a, a metal so very important to note all right let's see if i can get it to turn on there it goes and now we'll go ahead and get the laptop plugged in as well i think one of the biggest things i miss on this legion is windows hello um, I really enjoy being able to sit down and instantly be logged into my laptop. So, like, just having to type in a pin every time isn't so bad because we do have a number pad, but it's just one extra step that I don't love, right? So, all right. Okay, checking with chat. What are you guys talking about? Looks like you guys are talking about um, different setups that you can go for. Um, Aditya says, Gizmo, uh, could you maybe test Battlefield 2042 as well? I unfortunately, I don't have it. And I don't have it installed either. Eight gigs of VRAM is not enough, at least for QHD. Um, without adjusting settings. You're gonna have to adjust settings if you only have eight gigs of VRAM. To say it's not enough may be a lie in the sense that like, if you're willing to adjust settings, adjust potential resolutions even, or run it run at like DLSS on balance mode, for example, to reduce your VRAM usage, that's where eight gigs of VRAM is gonna be enough in the vast majority of titles, like 99% of them, so. Um, all right, did you already sell some of your laptops? Uh, yeah, I sold a couple of them now, but I still have quite a few for sale. So I am offering 10% off of what I paid for the laptop. Um, so 10% off of the sticker price plus tax, which is less than the total price for sure than what you would pay, at least if you're in the United States. And if you're international, the same discount applies to you. So yeah, I'm trying to make it more attractive. If you're interested in buying those laptops, become a member, join the, the program um, on the community tab. There'll be a link. Go down the, go down the community tab, look for that link and there'll be a way to apply. Um, you can also email, if you're interested in, in just buying one of the laptops without becoming a member, you can do that, but it's a $25 additional charge um, for not being a member. It's like a one-time donation, basically. Um, so anyway, and if, you want to, if you're interested in that, then you can uh, email uh, Ellie, which is E-L-I-E -E at gizmoslip.co. E L I E at gizmoslip.co. And that's if you want to, if you're interested in buying one of the laptops without becoming a member, just email him. Okay, so let's talk ports. 
This has a really good port selection overall. We of course have the front RGB light bar. Um, you can, uh, no ports obviously on the front, but the light bar looks really good, I think, and is very bright where you can still notice it in a fairly brighter environment. On the right side over here, we have, let me go ahead and see if I can focus. And there we go. On the right side, we have a Thunderbolt 4 USB-A 3.2. On the rear, we have power adapter port, two USB-A's 3.2's, HDMI 2.1, a USB-C with display port, and then we have our ethernet port. And the nice thing about these is that pretty much all of these are the top end of their port selection possibilities, uh, except for this one being USB-C instead of Thunderbolt 4, but you do already have that Thunderbolt 4 support anyway. Um, and so that's really not that big a deal. And then the other big thing is that's kind of a downgrade is these covers, these little um, icons used to light up. So these guys right here in the older version of this laptop would be illuminated uh, with like a white light. So you could find them easily in the dark. I loved that on my 2021 Legion. And it's really disappointing that they took those that feature away from this laptop. Now, on the right side, we have another USB-A. Can you see it? It's really dark. But right there, we have another USB-A. We have our webcam shutter and we have our headset port which is on the right side, which is a, a bit of a different design. Usually that's located on the left side. Um, and that's our port selection. Overall, the port selection is very good with four USB A's. Um, and you know, you've got the Thunderbolt support, you've got uh, HDMI 2.1 support. I really like the port selection overall. Let's take a look at the webcam. So we'll open the camera up. Yeah, it's HDMI 2.1. All right, so here's the webcam. I believe it's a 1080p webcam, but it's based, still basically your average webcam quality. It's not as good as a smartphone or anything. Oh, that tastes good. Very thirsty. Okay, so uh, I am recording a video right now, typing on the keyboard, talking, talking, talking. You notice that uh, at the top of the screen here, when the webcam is active, there is a white light indicating that the circuit leading to the webcam is activated. So you can know that it's activated. If I flip the webcam switch off, boom, the webcam goes off. Um, and of course the light goes out because that cuts off power to the webcam so it cannot be used. Um, and then, so you actually have to have this switch fix physically turned forward in order to activate that webcam. Um, we also have a mic array here for capturing the audio. And uh, you can see the quality or a good estimation of the quality by looking a little bit more at the detailed stuff like the Lumix here or the GH5. Um, you know, it's, this this webcam is, it's I would say slightly better than average compared to some gaming laptops, but it's not an amazing webcam. It's not terrible. It'll get the job done for talking to grandma or getting a business meeting done. Um, but you're not going to look super crazy stylish or super high quality with it. Uh, but it, it'll get the job done. So that's that's where we're at with the webcam. Um, let's talk about speakers. Let's try the speakers out. I'm very curious to see how these sound because they were so um, big and beefy looking on the underside there. So let's do it. Todoroki says, hey Gizmo, does the screen look like a massive downgrade in person compared to the mini LED screens you've seen so far? Um, if you're a screen person, this screen is definitely a downgrade compared to the other high-end uh, screens out there. Um, and yeah, it is pretty noticeable. Um, you know, it's, it's a bright display, but it's not gonna be as contrasty as a mini LED. Uh, it's not gonna be as bright as a mini LED. And it sure is not as colorful as those either, but a lot of gamers aren't that picky on color gamut, and this is colorful enough to where most content still looks pretty dang good, because it's 100% sRGB. And if you're 100% sRGB, I think you're. I think it's a a good place to be as a baseline. But if you're a graphic designer, video editor, someone like that, 
not having 100% or close to 100% P3 color gamut or Adobe RGB coverage is m gonna be very noticeable for someone who's very sensitive to the color gamuts and like how saturated things can look um, or how potentially color accurate things can look when it's tuned correctly. Um, and that'll be a really big deal to those people that rely on that in a screen. And the main reason for that is because, you know, let's say you're uh, editing a video and it looks a certain way on your laptop screen, but then you export it and it goes to your iPhone screen or Android screen, it could look totally different color wise. Um, and it probably will no matter what, but you want it to look as close to the final destination um, product that will be watching the content. Um, so that's what I always focused on as a content creator. Um, okay, so here we are. We've got the Pro 7i. We've got uh, Roar by Peter Spacey. Let's make sure that we have our, I think it's Nahemic. I think it's Nahemic for our audio software, yeah. Let's pull that up. And I also wanna mention that the touchpad for me on this has not been an issue or no problem in terms of the click. Uh, all of the clicks have been registering just fine um, compared to the Pro 5, the Legion Pro 5. So uh, even though this probably has the same exact touchpad as the Pro 5. So it probably was just on my specific unit. Anyway, so we currently have Nahemic effects on with bass boost and treble boost enabled. So let's go ahead and play Roar by Peter Spacey. I'm gonna hold the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop. I did not have the volume 100%, so now it's 100%. Well, so that song primarily tested the bass and the bass sounded really good. Um, the bass was very uh, distinct, clear, uh, but when the mids and highs kind of came in later in the song, the mids kind of felt a little bit muddled. Let's move on to the next song, Fade A Day on Half-Life. very impressed with the bass and the highs. They sound absolutely delicious, but the mids, they just feel a little bit muddled. And maybe that could be helped, maybe that could fi be fixed a bit with the Nahemic software. Uh, Deuce Williams, La 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 Love You. Overall, I really like these speakers. Uh, they're far better than the Legion Pro 5. Much better bass, uh, better clarity, especially in the highs. The mids still have room for improvement. I think they're in like the 8.8 range, somewhere in that range. Maybe not quite a nine, but a little bit under that. Um, overall, they have a good amount of volume. The bass is thumpy. Like you can feel the bass thump a bit. It's just not quite as much bass as something like the Blade 18 or the MacBook, but, uh, and then yeah, the mids and the highs are not quite as clean and as clear as those higher end speakers. So that's kind of why it's just a little bit below a nine, um, probably in like the 8.8 .8 is where I'm gonna give them. Um, yeah, so. Uh, sir, uh, I'm really sorry, I can't I don't know if I can pr pronounce your first name there. Uh, Sarid, Sirnad, Sirnad, yeah, Sirnad, 
Chowdhury uh, with a huge 44 um, something, I don't know what currency that is, super chat. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Um, I really appreciate it. Does disabling e-course help with battery um, backup? I believe you mean battery life. Um, or are you talking about in terms of the say battery backup? Can you make a video on that? Like, does it help boost battery life? I think is what you're asking. Um, I think it could maybe, or maybe even hurt it because sometimes the CPU can offload low intensity tasks over to efficiency cores, uh, to help improve your battery life. So that'd be an interesting video test. If I could, I don't know, that's a good idea. I should probably consider doing that. Thanks for the idea. And, uh, thanks for the super chat. Uh, Dynamic Phil asks, has anyone been, had any trouble with Razor support before? I picked up the Blade 18 based on Gizmo Slip, amazing reviews, but their support has been absurd. Um, worst customer service I've experienced in my life. That's too bad, Dynamic. Yeah, Razor definitely has some spotty customer service. That's uh, pretty much been known, which just really sucks. I really, that's one area they really need to work on as a brand. Um, okay, so the speakers, 8.8, .8, I love them overall. And you feel, I feel like you're getting your money's worth for these speakers, spending $3,000. You're not getting some crappy set of speakers that are just awful. Um, and this will fill a room fairly well with audio and you'll feel like you can hear the music overall pretty good uh, or pretty well. So that's really great. Um, let's move on to an overview of the, uh, the Lenovo Vantage software that you'll use for controlling this laptop. All right, so here's the Lenovo Vantage software. I'll make sure you can kind of see it all. All right, so at the top here, you can see that we have a Legion Pro 7, 16iRX8H. We have a little bit of GPU, CPU overview. I don't really use these because uh, they don't give enough detailed information. Um, that said, you can see we have 16 gigs of DDR5 5600 memory, i9-13900H. Uh, we got a Samsung one terabyte SSD. All right, and then underneath here, you can do a system update. I'd use this to update the BIOS today. So we have the latest BIOS update. All right, that's already been done. Um, and when you update the BIOS with the Pro 7i, you just click, uh, basically you check for updates and then you click download and then install and then you have to hit next and it restarts your machine, does the BIOS update uh, all automatically from the moment you hit next. So uh, you don't touch anything and then the laptop reboots and it comes back into Windows. Uh, and so far I've had no problems with the BIOS updates with any of my Legion products. So that's a giant thumbs up. You do have macro key control, so you can set um, some macro keys for your inputs. So if you want a series of key presses to happen when you press a certain button. Under power, you can set your battery uh, capacity. You have your, it also shows you your battery warranty right here. You have one year of battery warranty. Um, battery is in good condition. We're currently at 95% because I was running it on battery life a little bit earlier today. So it's kind of charging up to the max right now. Um, you have rapid charge, which allows you to charge faster than normal. Um, if you want to maintain the longest longevity on your battery life, uh, you probably want to disable that. But if you're in a hurry to charge it, it's, it's no problem leaving that on as well. Um, overnight battery uh, charging will reduce battery aging by setting your battery to only 80% and then up to 100% uh, by the time morning comes. So that way it's not at 100% all day or all night, um, which could be really nice if you're going to use your battery life on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, conservation mode allows you to extend the lifetime of your battery when plugged in. When you enable this, it keeps the battery to 75 to 80% of the capacity to increase the lifespan of the battery, okay? So this reduces your overall battery life on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but will increase the longevity of your lithium ion battery because you don't usually wanna keep lithium ion batteries at 100% charge all the time. Uh, there's always on USB, which will allow you to charge things uh, when you have the laptop in sleep mode, okay? That's very nice. You have the Lenovo Vantage toolbar which you can enable or disable. And I have this disabled. If you accidentally click yes on your Lenovo 
Vantage, when you're initially set up, it will put it in there for you, which is probably not great. Uh, Legion Arena is, I think, Legion Bloatware, I believe. Um, there's another button for it right here. I'm not sure exactly what Legion Arena does. Let's see. Legion Arena, access your entire game library. It wants to update the software, but it sounds like it's another game launcher, um, which to me is just redundant and a bad idea. So I probably would not use that. I'd probably uninstall that. Um, under media, you have your uh, camera. Oh, you can adjust your brightness and your contrast of your camera. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, nice. And then underneath, let's go back. Under uh, hardware scan, uh, you can look at what components you have. Under Nahimic, this is where you adjust your audio. So you can enable or disable this to get more boost or treble. And then under x ray Color Assist, you can try to color calibrate your display if you'd like. And there's also, uh, is there Toby eye tracking on this laptop? Um, it looks like there is Toby eye tracking, uh, which allows you to use, I mean, is there Toby eye tracking? I know the 7i had it. I didn't know if the Pro 7i had it. Uh, yeah, so um, this allows you to expand your view or rotate the camera inside of games based on where you're looking in the game, uh, which can be a really cool experience in certain titles. So x ray Color Assist basically allows you to color calibrate your display, and I believe it's color calibrated out of the box. All right. Uh, Shadow E, which one would you recommend between this and the M16, uh, the Asus Zephyrus M16? I would probably recommend this overall, uh, but I need to fix, or I need to fully test this before I can know for sure, right? So um, let's take a look at the keyboard now and the color spectrum, the Legion spectrum. This is where you can adjust all of the different colors and different patterns of the laptop. Now you can shift between each of these profiles using the FN and spacebar key. All right. So well, I'm just doing FN plus spacebar to switch between these. And the way you set each of these up will determine what happens after the fact. All right. So uh, if we want to set profile two, which profile two right now is everything is blue. All right. So. There's profile two. And if we want to change this, we can add effect. We'll add the effect to everything. We'll set effect to be a uh, rainbow wave. All right. You can set the effect to be top to bottom, right to left. Right now it's top to bottom. We'll do right to left. And now it's going to go from the right side over here to the left side. And it'll do the same colors on the light bar as well, which I really love that. It does a combination of everything. Um, and each of these areas are individually light upable. So if you want the light bar to be different than this area, then you can set it to be just to the applicable area. Um, like if you want the light bar to be off, for example, but you want the keyboard backlight to be on, you can do that. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and highlight all of the areas and we'll do. Um, We'll try an always light and then we'll do uh, white. Okay, so there's your, like if we wanted everything to be just all white on color profile two, color profile two is all blue. Let's do um, that rainbow, oh, whoa, that's a rainbow drop effect for profile four. That looks really cool. Let's leave it like that. What is this? Is this an audio? This is audio bounce lighting, so. So it bounces based on what is going on. So if we wanted to, uh, for audio bounce, if we wanted to play some music, this should, yeah. So now we've got the audio bouncing across the keyboard based on what's going on. This looks really cool. Audio ripple lighting comes out from the middle. That is really cool. Um, so those those effects on profile five and then off uh, audio ripple is on six. 
So um, some really, really cool effects there. I really like it. Um, screw rainbow, I guess that's rotating from the center. <laughs> you can change the speed of these effects to be a little faster or a little slower. You can always, uh, and you can also change clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so you get a lot of potential options. And to switch between these, you just need to press FN and spacebar, FN and spacebar, FN and spacebar, FN and spacebar, FN and spacebar. And that gives you all of the different customization at your fingertips. This is a very simple overall system to uh, customize your lighting. I love it. This is really good software. It's easy, it's intuitive. Um, and almost anyone can set up the lighting how they want to. Some of the software out there is just not as intuitive and nice as this. Uh, so that is really great. Great job, Lenovo. And this is much better than um, the IQ software they used to have, which was not only harder to use, but also killed your battery life. So um, David G says, nice effects. Yeah, I totally agree. This is really overall very good. Um, Super Solar 7, I would pay extra for even an opportunity to upgrade the screen to mini LED or OLED. And pay for the upgraded features like glass trackpad, lit ports. Yeah, a lot of people would. So it doesn't make sense to me that uh, Lenovo didn't offer that. Um, like I would pay extra to get all the full RGB lighting as well. Um, like I'd pay $50 more for the full RGB lighting. I would pay $50 more for the glass touchpad. I would pay another $25 for the lit RGB ports. And then basically you're still gonna pay the same price after all those little upgrades. And the mini LED screen, probably $200, $300 for that. After all those upgrades, you're paying the same price as the SCAR 16 or maybe the Blade 16, depending on how everything's spec'd and configured. And also, I would, I would really wish Legion uh, Lenovo would also offer the highest end processors as well. They only offer the i9-13900HX. That's not as high end processor. So speaking of processor, I think we're ready to start benchmarking this bad boy. Let's get going on that. So we're gonna get process lasso going here. That's gonna be installed. Let's go ahead and get Cinebench R23 turned on. Um, in terms of the Lenovo Vantage software for controlling performance, let's talk about that real quick because we didn't really touch on that yet. But um, basically what you do is in the top right over here, there is a performance mode, which can be uh, performance mode, balance mode, quiet mode, or custom mode. Custom mode uh, allows you to boost your uh, TDPs, you can do other additional things. So if we go inside of this performance option, you have your power limits, you can adjust uh, your temperature limits, your, um, your TGP, as well as your temperature targets for your GPU and your CPU. Uh, I love all of this. This is so cool to see. And for advanced users, this is really cool. And you can also have uh, adjust your fan speed and your fan curves now inside of the Legion software. So depending on the temperature range, the, the fans will ramp all the way up potentially to maximum. Um, today, we're gonna be testing in performance mode, which is the highest default specs that you can. And we're also gonna be enabled GP, enabling GPU overclock. Now, GPU overclock is a factory specification overclock. I believe it's 150 on the GPU clock and 200 on the uh, memory, on the video memory. So uh, basically this is gonna be, I think what a lot of advanced users will use. Oh, it allows you to adjust this right here. You can go all the way up to, it looks like 200. 200 is probably safe, but we're just gonna do the 150, which is their defaults. Um, and then 200 on the memory, the video, the VRAM, um, though I've been able to overclock all the way to a thousand on a lot of these laptops, but we'll just leave it at the defaults. I'm basically, when I test laptops, I try to test them at the highest default settings. And that's why we are going to leave these, enable this with performance mode. And we're going to see how the laptop does. Um, auto close mode adds apps that you want to close when you launch a game. Oh, that's kind of cool. Though I'm not sure if I would use that. Uh, network boost, this allows you to prioritize games over other apps when you're playing games. Um, GPU mode, we're currently in hybrid mode. We can use G D GPU only mode, but I've already set in the control panel in here. Um, so if you go into the NVIDIA control panel, you can go to a manage display mode up here in the top left. I'll zoom in on that real quick for you. 
Um, and you can set it between Optimus, which will switch between integrated graphics for better battery life and your dedicated uh, graphics card, the NVIDIA RTX 4090. Now, uh, you should not have any degradation of performance when you're in Optimus mode or NVIDIA GPU only mode. The main advantage to being NVIDIA GPU only mode is that when you load a game, it won't occasionally load into the wrong GPU. Sometimes some games think it should open inside of the integrated graphics card. If you're in NVIDIA GPU only mode, it won't do that. All right. Um, so in this, it didn't used to be this way. It used to be when you're in Optimus mode, um, you'd be routing yourself through the integrated GPU and slowing down your uh, CPU, GPU connection, and bottlenecking yourself through your CPU's integrated graphics card, reducing your performance, especially in CPU bound games. We have advanced Optimus in this system. So if, we're, if we are using the RTX 4090, there should be a direct connection between the display and the 4090. It should not have any kind of Optimus bottlenecking unless you're using a display out, um, perhaps like the Thunderbolt 4. If the Thunderbolt 4 routes through the integrated GPU, then you might run into Optimus bottlenecking. That's the only scenario when using this laptop that you will have that kind of performance degradation occurring to the best of my knowledge. Now, and I know Asus laptops have this dedicated GPU mode where it literally turns off, it reboots the system and completely disables the integrated GPU. This simply reduces the power consumed by the integrated GPU or the um, Intel CPU, slightly making the system more power efficient, but it doesn't necessarily uh, improve any performance in terms of actual game performance um, because we're already being routed correctly, directly to the GPU, to the display. Um, that said, we can switch to this DGPU mode. Uh, this requires a restart if we wanted to reset into it. Um, and that's fine. We can, like I said, it doesn't really affect anything. We could restart into it. We could not restart into it. All of the benchmark data should still be the same um, unless you're going to uh, try to disable the integrated GPU for some reason. All right, so here's process lasso. We're just gonna prioritize our Cinebench R20, or yeah, our Cinebench R23 window to be above normal. And so CPU priority, we're gonna to set to always be above normal. All right, and there we go. And let's go ahead and open our HW info and also get the laptop propped up on the back, just like that. All right, so now we have slightly improved airflow because we are propped up in the back, we are in performance mode. The fans are ramping up quite noticeably if you haven't uh, if you can't hear them, I can hear them. Here's what they sound like. That's about three inches away from the laptop fan. The fans sound really good. It's kind of like a low whoosh sound, not very whistly, which I like that. That's what most people like to hear. When you do hear fan noise, you don't want it to be very whistly sounding. So, all right. Beautiful. Okay, so. Very good, very good. I realized that you couldn't see the G DGPU mode when I was talking about that, but it's okay. It really does not matter that much, so. Okay, beautiful. Checking. Is the max 175 watt for the GPU? That is correct, Grease Monkey. Uh, Skimborg, they talked a lot about the AI on balance mode. That's a great question, and I would love to test at least one game today uh, with the AI and see how it handles it a little bit differently. Maybe we can do that with Cyberpunk or something, so. Um, all right, so. Cinebench R23, let's see what we get in a single run. I'm anticipating, uh, we are currently not undervolting this Legion Pro 7i. My understanding is that you can undervolt it though. And uh, I would love to do a live stream tweaking and optimizing the Pro 7i for the most performance with undervolting and overclocking. If that live stream idea sounds good to you, let me know in chat or in the comment section down below. Um, yeah. 
Your history says, loving my Aura 17H so far. Great bang for the buck. Based it on his laptop ranking deals. Yeah, dude, congrats, man. That is going to be a very powerful system for your money. So we got 30,193. That's right in line with what we've seen from other i9-13900HX CPUs. Um, that said, if, if we get this thing undervolted um, and overclocked, um, basically when you're undervolted, it automatically overclocks the CPU, we should be able to get at least 32,000, maybe 34,000 on the higher end, um, maybe even a little higher. I, I, have seen, I have seen some numbers like 36,000 plus for the Legion Pro 7i, but that's silicon lottery for sure. So we got 30,307. Let's go ahead and check out our temperatures um, and our core clocks. So our core clocks right now, our CPU is doing 4.1 gigahertz across all of the P cores, 3.4 gigahertz across all of the E cores. This is good, not amazing. We have seen like 4.3 gigahertz across the P cores and uh, like 3.5 gigahertz across the E cores once everything is undervolted. Our core temperatures are 80 degrees right now across all of the different cores right now. You can see uh, basically our peak temps have gone up to 97 degrees on some of the cores. So we are reaching that thermal throttle target which is 97 degrees based on the BIOS and the settings that are set up right now in the Vantage software. So we have hit thermal throttle levels. If we undervolt, it will help um, boost our clock speeds and our performance a little bit more. But uh, notice our power, that we're, our power draw was 132. We're also dropping down to 27.8 thousand for our a multi-core score there, though we are kind of digging around in HW info, which is going to kind of, you know, reduce our score a little bit, right? So 171 watts, 162 watts to that CPU package. That is very high uh, for our CPU power. I'm very curious if you uh, were to tweak all of those settings in the custom mode, you probably would be able to get quite a bit higher because we are seeing that power limit dropped down to, what is that, 130 watts for the long power limit, which is not enough to really push the CPU to the maximum potential. So initially here, we're hitting the 174 watts. Um, it's probably set to 175 for the maximum short limit, and then it drops down to this 130 power limit, maybe even 125. And that's when our temperatures also come really down and are really, really good. Uh, overall, Things are looking pretty good for a non-tuned system. This is performance right in line with almost all the other systems that we've seen. And the temperatures and power limits are also pretty dang good. It seems like our CPU pace job was pretty balanced and that we are, we are not running into um, one or two cores just instantly heating up to 100 degrees like we were on the Legion Pro 5 with the Ryzen system. Um, so th that's really good. I'm glad to see that. I have started a 10 minute test now. I'm also going to reset. You know what? I'm going to stop this. I'm going to give it 30, 40 seconds here just to cool down um, and dissipate some heat uh, before we start a 10 minute test. Just so it, there's a chance at the beginning for it to just, you know, kind of ramp up. So. I want to see good temperatures. I want to all see all these key, these cores go down to like around 50 or maybe a little bit under 50. Like I want to see most of the cores go down to the 40s basically and then we can start the 10 minute test. So a couple of the cores are still in the 50s but almost all of them now are in the 40s. Beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our 10 minute test now. And I will also reset. We have reset our HW info. So now we can get our average core clock speeds and all of that. So we're doing 4.4 gigahertz on the P cores initially, down to 4.1 gigahertz very quickly, 3.4 gigahertz on the E cores. Our temps so far are in the 80s for almost all of the cores. Looks like P core five, P core four, P core four and two, 96 degrees. 
and six as well as 96 degrees. So some of the cores are hitting a little bit higher temps. Um, looks like two, four, uh, two, four, and six, but they're not hitting it instantly. It took at least 15, 20 seconds. Actually, that was almost a minute for them, the, the cores to hit that high of a temp. So um, they certainly have some cooling coverage, but we are hitting thermal throttling. Now our package power so far has averaged 158 watts during the first minute so far, which is very high. I like to see that much wattage going through the CPU. That's excellent. 132 watts now. We have come down to our long power limit. It's probably after about a minute, it comes down to the long power limit. Now I'm expecting the rest of this 10 minute test to be at a lower power limit you know, between 140 and 125 watts. Uh, and that's also gonna translate to lower overall temps across all of the cores. So you can see that right now, almost all of these cores are in the 70s or low 80s. Our highest temp right now is about 85 degrees on core two. Uh, core four, I guess is 87. Um, but most of these are 74, 75, 77, 79, 78, 80, 81. So our temps are excellent overall, uh, but look at our P core. Our P cores are now only 3.6 gigahertz, 3.7 gigahertz, and our E cores are 3.1 gigahertz. So we've had a significant drop off in our core frequency um, just in this short period of time. And that's because of the power limit dropping, you know? so. Uh, but overall, this is right in line with a, the range of performance that you should expect for an i9-13900HX. The, the system is out of the box, configured pretty dang well to give you a good performance without giving you crazy temperatures. Now, if we, since it's, a, I believe, an unlocked CPU, Lenovo lets you tweak it with Intel XTU and other control softwares like Throttle Stop. That's going to let us undervolt this thing, raise the long power limits. It'll let us push the performance of the CPU up to maximum and really um, give us that the ultimate level of performance control that advanced users will love to see. So uh, the Pro 7i should have that functionality built into it, uh, but I haven't tested that yet. That's my understanding. And if it does, uh, after I, I will do, I'll do more testing with this on my own off stream. And then after tweaking it and testing it out, I'll do another live stream and we can compare an optimized system performance with the Pro 7i versus uh, the default stock performance. And then I'll go through all the different steps you need to take to reach those optimal performance numbers uh, so that you can get the most performance out of your laptop. Um, Chowdhury with another uh, super chat. Uh, video on disabling P cores for battery. That's an interesting idea. I, I, that's, that's pretty, uh, I don't know. Maybe that, that would work. Well, maybe it wouldn't. I, I, that's a good question. How much battery life would you get if you just had like, I don't know, four E cores. That's all the cores you had activated on your I nine. And you just want to have, you just want to type in a word document. <laughs> you disable the RTX 4090, you reduce the battery, uh, the display brightness all the way down to nothing, turn off Wi-Fi, turn off Bluetooth, and only run four e-cores. What battery life do you get then? <laughs> it's just like a Netflix watching machine, and that's all it is. That'd be pretty funny. Um, does it have Windows Hello? No, it does not. There's no Windows Hello here. <sighs> Harambi asks, what are the top three Best cooled laptops that I have tested so far. So, hmm. Well, I would say the GT77 Titan had phenomenal temperatures. Um, overall, it was one of the best that I've had this year. Uh, we had really good temps and performance on the Blade 18 for its thickness and size. I, li I loved it. Uh, but it's not the highest, uh, I think, or the best thermals. The, hmm, what other ones were really, really good? The, uh, the MSI GE78 was excellent. My SCAR 16 was also pretty good. The SCAR 18 was also pretty dang good. Um, 
You know, it's interesting. The the Ryzen laptops I've tested this year, all of them have been re really hot. They all run warm and they all get to almost 100 degrees Celsius or maybe 95 degrees Celsius, whatever the throttle temp is. Um, they've all been hitting that very quickly and easily when running um, Cinebench or CPU bound games, almost all of them at least. So it's interesting. I think, I think cooling the Ryzen chips is a... Uh, certainly a bit more of a challenge than some of the Intel chips, simply because the Intel chips not only run higher wattage, but they also um, put out basically for the same temperature, really good performance. I guess part of it is if you run the Ryzen chips at like three quarters of their maximum wattage, they still get really good performance and their temps are awesome. But then when you push the Ryzen chip to as high a voltage and wattage as you possibly can go, the temps go always, they always go to the max. They always go crazy. And, uh, and the performance is really good too. And the re and, and stability seems to be good. So I don't know if it's a problem, but the, uh, the temperatures certainly get hot with all of the Ryzen chips that we've, that we've ran so far this year, as far as I know and can remember. And yet the performance was good. And the best thing I think about those, the Ryzen chips versus the Intel chips was the efficiency when at like a medium wattage level. They, the temperatures just become really good, and the performance is still really good, even at that medium wattage level, which is good to ha a good thing to have in a laptop, especially if you want to have like a good blend of fan noise and performance. That said, the Intel chips have been pretty good too in that, in that department. Some of these laptops aren't really that loud, and yet they're still cranking just super high levels of performance at medium loud fans or lower lower fan noise. Like the Blade 18 and Blade 16, very minimal fan noise for the level of performance you're getting. Um, how's this FRS Duo? That's largely what I was talking about. Um, that was one of the, that's probably the biggest Ryzen laptop I have tested so far. I did a lot of tests with that. Um, and that one almost always was hitting max temperatures on the CPU, but it was great performance. It was really good performance. But it was usually hitting max temps in a lot of different games, a lot of different products. Um, the thing was, though, if you if you go to like a uh, medium performance profile with the Ryzen chip, it was just really great at um, running instead of running at like 80, 90 watts or whatever. It was running at like 40 watts and it was still putting out similar frame rates to what the Intel was doing, um, you know, in games. But it just wasn't. Uh, yeah. It was just much more power efficient, but at the same time, it was still was getting pretty spicy on the temps. So it's, it's kind of a catch-22. I'd have to look at it specifically each game scenario to, to really evaluate it. But um, Steven Nasher says, Zen 4 chips have aggressive boosting behavior that almost always hugs that TGA Max. Yeah, it really, the, yeah, if you, if you set the, all the Ryzen chips to like the max performance profile modes, like turbo mode on the Asus Duo 16 or manual mode with highest power limits, it just hugs that max throttle temp and it tries to put out as much performance as possible which makes sense um because as far as we know it seems to be very safe and stable and it's not causing it to crash it's not causing one percent lows or stutters um and you know amd believes it's not going to damage the system at all either so um it's just interesting because a lot of the intel laptops like the really cooled like the gt77 Man, we're pushing really high wattage through that CPU sometimes, um, like 80 watts or 90 watts with the GPU pulling 150 watts or something. And it's, and the temps oftentimes were still so good. Like it was still like, oh, 75 degrees on the CPU still, like what? And the GPU was like 65 degrees. It was like, holy crap. So in terms of like total thermal headroom and load, I would say the GT77 still is the best. Um, just cause of its crazy four fan thermal cooling design but, but yeah. Okay. So looking here, we're looking at our 10 minute score. Uh, we have 3.7 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.1 gigahertz on the E cores. Our average package temp was 78 degrees for 10 minutes and, uh, 85 degrees for the overall package, but the core temps was 78 degrees. So overall really, really good there. And our overall package power was a little over 130 Watts. It kind of started coming down there, but Really, really good overall performance out of the gate. I can't wait to see how this thing tunes. Um, after a nice tune with an overclock, undervolt, 
um, and maybe the custom fan profile and the Lenovo Vantage software. I think we can easily push this over 30,000 points in Cinebench R23. So we got 27,722 stock performance mode um, without any undervolts or any special settings. So uh, will you make a video on that if possible? I do want to make a video on how to optimize this, this laptop. Um, so overall, this is not peak potential i9-13900HX performance because the default short or the default long power limit was only like 130 watts. And that's all that we need to change really to boost. Like if we could change one setting and get much better performance, it's just raising the long power limit to like 145. And then we would get probably 29,000 something. And then we add a little bit of an undervolt. Um, then we're going over 30,000. And so, and then we might even go all the way, if with, with a strong undervolt, probably like 32K, I bet, I bet we could go at least to 32,000 right here for our multi-core score. Um, overall, great CPU performance. This is gonna be uh, plenty of CPU performance for anyone. Like everyone, it's gonna ha ha be very happy with CPU performance. That said, I do wish we do had, I wish we had the option to get the i9-13980HX. Right? If we had the i9-13980HX in this, we'd be able to push um, even a little bit more on the CPU performance. So kind of a bummer that we don't have that option in here. So far, how does this compare to the SCAR 16, a similar size chassis? I think the SCAR 16 has a real advantage um, in the department where we have a mini LED display that's brighter, more colorful, a higher color gamut, and better contrast. The display is the biggest advantage for the SCAR 16, but the build quality, um, the firmness of the build is, I think, a nice big advantage for the Legion Pro 7i. So um, also, I think the port selection is vastly better on the Legion Pro 7i. Uh, so that's another huge advantage. Um, so between build quality and port selection, I think a lot of people would rather go with the Legion as well as pricing. Um, the Legion is a little bit better on the price, but in terms of like, if you're looking for the ultimate gaming laptop, not only does the SCAR 16 have a better CPU model because it has the i9-13980HX, but now with the new BIOS updates, the SCAR 16 is un uh, unlocked, so you can undervolt it. And the, uh, the other big thing, is the uh, SCAR 16, I don't know. The SCAR 16 has more of a totally different aesthetic design. Like I feel like the SCAR 16 is designed for the gamer where the Pro 7i is designed for the business professional, I guess, that also games in terms of its overall aesthetic. Um, because with the with the Legion Pro 7i, you literally just turn off the RGB or make it white, and it looks like a business laptop 100%. It doesn't even look like a gaming laptop whatsoever. So in terms of uh, which laptop between the SCAR 16 and the Legion Pro 7i would I pick? For myself, I think either of them would be an amazing laptop to own and use, and it really depends on which one I can get my hands on and which one maybe has the better bang for the buck because they both have their pros and cons. Um, and uh, I, I think you could easily make an argument for either of them being better or worse than the other one. In terms of bang for the buck, I think the advantage has got to go to the Legion Pro 7i because of the lower price tag. Um, so, so that's kind of my initial thought. Okay. I need to adjust this. All right. My Riva tuner was not uh, set to the right sizing. So it wasn't showing us the um, overlay. 
as clearly as it should have. Ah, my favorite game, 3D Mark Time Spy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, so uh, overall first impressions so far, if you're just joining the live stream, first of all, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to my channel where I live stream unboxing reviews of all of the latest laptops. And I'll do it probably other gaming tech and other hardware as well soon. Um, but, uh, but yeah, welcome to the channel. Please do consider subscribing and liking the live stream and video. That said, my first overall impressions of this machine, the build quality feels awesome. It feels firm, it feels delicious, it feels well designed. The software works well, the keyboard works well, the touchpad's been awesome. The webcam is pretty decent. The cooling system seems spot on so far. Look at our temps. Starting out here in TimeSpy, we're doing 175 watts or 174.9 there for a little bit. Now we're down to 165, 170, uh, but only 61 degrees on that GPU during this initial load. Our CPU is also 68, 70 degrees there. That's also phenomenal, especially considering that we're putting 65 watts of power into that CPU right now. That's really, really good. Um, now, please keep in mind that we do have the Lenovo Vantage default overclocking enabled right now. This is uh, how we're gonna test this laptop today. Because I think a lot of people are just gonna click that overclock button, because why not? Um, I think almost all users probably should because you're basically leaving performance on the table if you don't click it. It should not impact reliability or performance, uh, stability. It just should increase performance with no downsides pretty much, especially if you leave it at the stock 150 core clock, 200 memory overclock. So, um, so just know that if you don't click that overclock button, you're gonna get about 5% less probably on the score. I'm anticipating with this, these settings, I'm hoping we can push at least 22,500 for our time spy score, maybe even breaking 23,000, but probably not. I'm guessing 22,500 for time spy GPU. Um, overall, we are seeing so far consistently uh, pretty dang good on the boost clock, doing 174 watts again. Well, we've seen a few moments where it dropped down to like 160, 165 watts, uh, but that's normal as the, the load on the GPU maybe is not always sustained 100% perfectly, uh, and that's typical of video games. So I, what I'm looking for in this test is a consistently high amount of wattage to the GPU, um, especially when we have 100% GPU utilization. We want to be seeing typically at least 170 watts of power most of the time as a minimum um, spec. Like we saw just a moment there for 180 watts. Occasionally we'll see a little boost above 175, but the average wattage we wanna see over 170 for one of these high-end spec systems. Um, you know, like the Aura 17X was a great laptop, but we did not see consistently high wattage pulls on the GPU. And as a result, we also saw reduced performance and reduced numbers in games and in time spy. So, um, it just wasn't a system that was tuned perfectly, um, but it felt like it could definitely get to the point where it was tuned better just with like a BIOS and driver update. So um, we'll see if Gigabyte fixes the Aura 17X. I hope they do uh, to make it like a laptop I can perfectly recommend. Anyway, so with this basic overclock, uh, just the default overclock, we got 22,000. 45. So we did break 22,000, but we did not get close to the 22.5 mark. Our CPU score, 15,789. These are good results. Um, the CPU score is good. The GPU score is very good. It's not the max that we've seen. You know, we've seen uh, the, the MSI GT77 Titan almost hit 24K with a peak GPU overclock. So uh, definitely not the best possible. That said, this is very, very good performance um, out of the box. I love it. Let's go ahead and run Port Royale and see what we get. Uh, Futu, Futuo says, had the SCAR 16-4090, two ROG Duo 4090s, Legion Pro 7i 4090, the Legion wins overall in my testing. Also, the stock 32 gig RAM was very fast in the Legion. 
Um, the Asus's were running at 4,800. Yes, so the, all of that sounds correct. The, uh, the Legion RAM running at 5,600 is a nice advantage in CPU bound games or CPU sensitive applications, memory sensitive applications. You can just get like, you know, like five or 10% performance boost with that memory uh, speed increase. So um, it's not gonna be very noticeable in most games. Um, most games are GPU bound. So, but the games that are not GPU bound, that are CPU bound, like a lot of esports games or maybe games like Dead Space, having the faster RAM is an awesome little advantage to boost performance, right? So, all right. So I went ahead and um, looks like we got our overlay being glitched out a little bit, but uh, there is Port Royale. Zibald, did you see my earlier message? Maybe I missed it. Let's see. Uh, Zabal says, I both my Legion 7 with 4090 this morning using your link. I seen it on sale and I couldn't wait till the stream starts to buy it. Dude, congrats. I hope, I hope it's awesome, dude. And I hope it has no issues. I so far have had zero issues on mine. The pace job was good. The touchpad's working well. Um, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with the display. Uh, speaking of which, we didn't do our display test. We should do that before we continue on to more games. So I'm gonna get a refill real quick with water and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. How are we doing? Looks like our CPU is hitting 80 degrees. That's still uh, well within spec. Our GPU is 71 degrees and 174 watts. Looks like uh, that's great. Let's see what we get for our score. So we got 14,237, that's fantastic. Uh, one test that I've been wanting to start incorporating is Speedway. Um, let's go ahead and pop into Speedway. I'd like to start doing this one as well in our 3D Mark. This is one of the more modern tests that uh, I believe it has ray tracing as part of the test and it's, a, and it's, it's got like a nice blend of RAW rasterization and ray tracing performance tests, so. Um, Martin Whedon says, uh, hi, what about the display test? I'm waiting for it. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, Martin. I appreciate it. Uh, Mars says, use custom mode and turn everything to max. Uh, that's something that I think we'll do in a follow-up live stream on how to tune and overclock and undervolt uh, the Legion Pro 7i. In today's testing, we're just gonna be setting the GPU to overclock and we're gonna be in performance mode because um, that's what most users would know how to do out of the box. So, so again, notice the uh, the ray tracing here in Speedway. It's very high end graphics in this test, and the <laughs> it just looks simply gorgeous. Uh, I wanted to mention: Is anyone else playing Jedi Survivor? Uh, I was able to play that a little bit yesterday. I don't know. Uh, made it through the initial opening. Um, battles where you fight the first Sith and then moved on to like an open world area and we made it through the first little story segment where you had to fight another Sith. Really, I'm enjoying the game, but like it feels like the storyline of Jedi Survivor is just, it's not moving as nearly as well and it doesn't flow nearly as well. Uh, get the player engaged. Just like like in the first, in the first, ver uh, the first game, with Cal, you just were so invested in his story and making him a more powerful Jedi and like playing it. It was awesome. The second one is kind of like, I don't know, it just feels like a bit aimless. And so I'm kind of hoping the storyline picks up and becomes a lot better. Anyway, so for Speedway, we got 56, 92. Um, 
not even sure where this falls in terms of quality or like the the score. It's obviously I'm sure a pretty good, pretty dang good score, but uh, just because we haven't we don't do the speedway test very often. Um, but yeah, so about 5700 for our speedway test. All right, so let's move back into our uh, display test. So let's go ahead and open the Spider Five software. Uh, Steven actually says, uh, me, 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 uh, the latest patch fixes performance quite a bit. So you know what's interesting? So when I was performance optimizing on, I was trying over, I was playing on the Blade 18. We were playing on our uh, 4K TV, but I was only running at 2560 by 1440. And no matter what I did, I could not get the dang game engine to push the GPU to 175 watts. Um, like it only, it only wanted to push the GPU and Jedi survivor up to like 90 Watts. And then we were only getting like 30, 35 to 50 FPS, even with an RTX 4090 at QHD resolution. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this dang game? Um, cause I know like you, you press escape and you go into the, you press escape and you go into the game engine and this thing, it like goes up to like 150 FPS when you're like selecting your skills and abilities. You're like, what the heck? And then you go into the actual game and it's only, and the wattage goes up to 175 watts when you're in that mode of the menu. And then when you go into the actual game again, it just like drops. The wattage drops down to like 80, 90 watts to the 4090. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this thing? Anyway, so I turned VSync, I turned VSync on and then suddenly the wattage pull is higher the FPS is nonstop 60. It's perfectly smooth. So enabling VSync gave me much smoother um, FPS and the 1% lows were also went from like 15 to 20 up to like 35 to 45. So the gameplay suddenly became um, visibly almost perfectly fluid and smooth with occasional little hitches here and there. So if you were to, uh, if you're struggling with, with it, I would recommend trying to turn on VSync and see if you get better performance. Um, Cause it seems like the game engine was almost designed with VSync in mind, which is such a dumb thing. Like, come on. <laughs> High end enthusiasts don't want to just play at 60 FPS. We want to play at like maximum possible FPS, right? So, here we are, we've got our Spider 5. And we've got the display test. Let's go ahead and pop this in. Gamut, brightness and contrast. Start our test. Okay, we're gonna make sure that we're at the highest brightness right now, and we are now at highest possible brightness. All right. Beautiful. Ah, Jedi Survivor is broken. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I think, I think, I think the, uh, I think the Blade 18 with a 4090 is easily capable of going over 100 FPS in that game. If it was like set to 100, if I was actually hitting the max GPU wattage, um, like the GPU was at like 55 degrees. It was barely being taxed at all. It just felt so silly. Like you pay $4,000 for a laptop and it's getting the same FPS as the RTX 4060 that we were getting in the Pro 5 a couple days ago. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> really? Really? Come on. Come on, game engine optimization. Uh, Jedi Survivor also uses a ton of VRAM. Um, yeah, when I was setting everything to epic mode, I was getting the same FPS as when I set everything on low. Um, but the VRAM usage at QHD was about 12 gigs of VRAM. So, definitely. Talents Tech, is there any interest in checking the display with HDR enabled? Um, we could. 
we could do an HDR enabled test and then disable it and see the differences, but um, I actually have pretty limited time today. So, uh, Brian Guerra says, do you think it's worth upgrading from Windows Home to Pro for $70 on the Lenovo? Uh, probably only if you plan on taking the laptop into businesses. If you plan on taking it into offices where they have enterprise networking, you need the pro version usually to interface with those networks. If you don't go to those types of network environments, then you just use the laptop at home. Don't need pro, I don't think. Uh, Martin Wien says, Brandon, what about the flickering on the Blade 18? Is it okay now? Do you see any other problem with the Blade? Uh, so my flicker on the Blade 18, it was there. And then uh, it, uh, like two weeks after the laptop came out, they came out with the, the fix for it. It fixed it. Uh, and then a couple weeks ago, it came back a little bit. I reset my computer again. Um, I think it went through another update and it went away again. So I'm not seeing any flicker on the Blade 18 now. Um, what I really need though is for, I need the Blade 18 to not have flicker and I can use Advanced Optimus to switch between integrated GPU and NVIDIA GPU so I have better battery life because I'm in NVIDIA GPU only mode the whole time I've had the laptop. And I have just haven't spent the time to troubleshoot it yet because I just don't have time. Um, it's very busy right now. Okay, so my Spider 5 Elite, this guy is uh, great at measuring color gamut but it tends to underestimate color gamut by Anywhere from like six to nine percent, probably like seven or eight percent, maybe eight percent on average, kind of what I estimate. So we are definitely hitting 100% sRGB if you were to factor that in, um, which is what you're expecting. Like if you measure with another tool, it's probably going to give you 100% sRGB measurement, uh, and then you're probably going to be closer to 80% Adobe RGB, 80% of the P3 color gamut with another tool. Uh, that's maybe a little more sensitive. Now, if we go to brightness and contrast, we got 4.2 nits on the low end, which is very dim. If you're in a dark environment, that's going to be awesome. You're not going to blind your eyes in a pitch, pitch black room. Um, if you go to four, if you go to the max 100% brightness, we got 490 nits, which is very close to the maximum rated brightness that uh, Lenovo claims. So they claim 500 nits. So that's good that we are very close to it. Too bad we're not above it, but. This is within variance for sure. Like if we measured other areas of the display, we would probably for sure go above 500 nits. Um, we are at 1,020 to one on contrast ratio, which is uh, I think slightly above average. It seems like most of the displays this year have been around the 800 to 900 contrast ratio. So that's nice to see, 1,020 to one. Overall, this is a very good display, um, but on a 3,000 plus dollar laptop, you would ideally want a one, uh, closer to 100% P3 and Adobe color gamut. That's probably the main weakness of this display. If there was a weakness, that would be it, I would think. Okay, so um, that's my main criticism of the display. I would just love to see more color. Like the color itself can become more colorful. Let's pop over to YouTube. Um, the, that said, this is not a bad display by any means. And it's not like you're gonna be like, oh, it's such a terrible display. Like it is not a terrible display. You're gonna enjoy movies. You're gonna enjoy video games with this display. It's just when you look at this display, especially side by side with another display that is a higher end display, you would just go, oh, I can see a deeper green. I can see a more colorful blue. I can see a more vibrant, bright and the blacks on, especially on a mini LED or OLED display, the blacks look really black instead of being kind of like almost like a washed gray or washed out black. So um, those are the primary differences and drawbacks of this display. I think the vast majority of gamers are gonna love this display and it's not gonna be an issue for them. Um, so especially the fact that it's so bright is awesome. Awesome to see. I just wish Lenovo would offer um, by default, a 100% Adobe and P3 color gamut display since almost all of the competition nowadays offers that. So that's where I'm at with the uh, the display. It's like, it's like two giant thumbs up, but also at the same time, I wish it was a little bit better. I think that's probably one of the biggest areas that you're sacrificing when you go with the Pro 7i. When you go with the Pro 7i, 
you're saying, okay, I'm not gonna get the highest end display in this unit, and that's okay. Um, that said, can you buy the mini LED version, guys, in America right now? I'm not sure if you can. So. Zabald says that you can get the 4090 version for 2749 right now on B&H Photo. That's a pretty good deal. If you do use that deal, please do use the link on my sheet if you can. Um, okay, so Pro 7i, let's check out the display's response time now, all right? So we're gonna go through our gamut of games testing now. We've got over 10 games to try to get through, so we're gonna move through them quickly. We're on basically maximum settings. We're gonna go into the shooting range first, and then we'll hop into a, a quick match. Casual Philosopher says, compared to the SCAR 16 Mini LED, it looks a bit better, but the Mini LED has light bleed or discoloration, especially with whites. So with that, I don't think it's a lot better. Interesting. Okay. All right, let me get repositioned so I can control. I want to be able to control this guy. There we go. All right, beautiful. Got to change a couple settings. All right, I'm gonna turn the volume up. Oh, wow. That is, that is strong volume. Oh, well, you know what we didn't do? Did not change sensitivity down to one. I am getting my aim tuned again. I've not played Apex. I haven't had time to play Apex in like a week at least. My muscle memory for aim is like shot right now. All right, so what's our FPS right now? We are hitting. We're hitting the 240. Interesting. It's feeling really good. The display is very responsive. Okay, so we ended up with 236 FPS, 169 for 1% lows. Phenomenal. That is really, really good. Let's go into video. We're gonna just uh, see. We should be able to get basically 300 FPS by just turning off these settings down here. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Honestly, it's hard to tell the difference because it felt really good before. It was still above the screen's refresh rate, even on high settings. But now it just, the 1% lows make it feel extra buttery smooth being a little bit higher. So we're averaging 298 FPS, which is basically the max FPS you can get in this game. Which is great, okay, cool. So, um, perfect. That is That shows you that the eSports gaming on this is gonna be awesome. I think the biggest drawback to mini LED is the bloom in the dark environments. Massive L says, is overdrive on? It's a good question. Um, either way, with overdrive on or off, it should still be really good. Overdrive was disabled at the time during that testing, um, but I still did not see any ghosting or difficulty aiming. It still felt really good.
Brian Guerra says, would the Legion Pro 7i 4070 be great for someone that doesn't play high-end games with max graphics? So I think the biggest thing, if you go with a 4050, 4060, or 4070, Brian, the biggest thing is you got to recognize the 8 gigs of VRAM. And that if you go with a QHD screen with a 4050, 4060, or 4070, you're going to need to be able to tweak your textures down so that you're not just running into games, playing games, and it's a stuttery mess. Because that's what we're running into in a lot of the games um, when we uh, are playing on the 4050, 4060, and 4070 on QHD laptops. It's just we go into it, and it's like, boom, stutter, 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 until we tweak the settings. Once the settings are tweaked, it's awesome. Um, you know, so it's just certain games are especially demanding for, uh, for that. Uh, is this live? Yeah, Bo Astoria, this is live. We are live right now. So I'm going to turn the volume up. We're going to play through a few lives, see if we can get a couple kills, and then uh, we're going to move on to the next game. Reposition the camera a little bit. I'm gonna also try to see if I can hear any spatial audio. Ooh, I think I heard spatial audio there. Um, oh yeah. You can definitely hear a bit of audio separation left and right sides. Oh yeah, I'm hearing I'm hearing audio separation and spatial uh, awareness on my left and right sides pretty noticeably. Let's see if I can flank these guys. Let's kill them. I did 60 flesh to that guy. Uh, so, uh, wow. I'm actually really impressed with the spatial audio. It's probably the third best spatial audio I've had on any of these laptops um, so far in 2023. I would say the Blade 16 and 18 are better than this. But this is still very close. I really dislike the L-Star as a weapon. I'm gonna drop down here, see if we can find someone. Oh. Dang. Ooh, that's the guy I killed earlier. <laughs> Man, Apex is such a good game. The gunplay is so good. Uh, so far, how's the Pro 7 compared to the Scar? Um, if it was my money and I was on a budget, I would definitely go, I think, with the Pro 7i. If you have no, no budget limitations, then I think the Mini LED is the biggest reason to go with the Scar 16. Just because the display is a lot better on the Scar series. Oh, I did. Someone near me. <laughs> I tried mailing him, I missed. We did 98 to that Wraith. There we go. We're on a roll. We got a multi kill going here. Uh oh. I'm gonna die. Okay, last life, and then we're gonna move on to the next game. Okay. Awesome. So a uh, phenomenal gaming experience in Apex Legends. Uh, not only do we have spatial audio, left, right, audio separation um, for non-headphone gameplay, 
Uh, but it also is very responsive, high performance. Um, the colors look good. And yeah, it's no complaints at all. It was a great experience. Uh, what resolution are we using right there? We are using 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, Alpha M06 says, late to the party. How do you find the, the 7i so far? The market, they market its AI features a lot. Can you say this does help in some aspects? We are going to try to test the AI feature in, uh, see if it's any different in Cyberpunk. We are currently not using the AI. We're using performance mode with um, GPU overclock enabled. Okay, so popping into our graphics settings, just make sure that we're on the right one. We're on full screen exclusive, 240 hertz, 2560 by 1600. Minimum specs, DLSS enabled, quality settings. Textures are set to high. Sweet. We go into Warzone 2, Battle Royale solos, find a match, beautiful. Is the keyboard deck hot? Uh, Shadowy, let me zoom out so you can kind of see this. Uh, right now, this is room temperature. This is a little bit warm. WASD keys are on the warmer side, but they're not hot. It's like, you know, not. I can keep my fingers on these all day without sweating or feeling in pain or anything. Going around the keyboard, the J and H keys over here, this is on the hotter side. Uh, not quite uncomfortable to touch, but definitely would be on the warm side for sure. Going a little higher here, up to the number keys, the four keys, not too bad. The five, six, seven, eight keys. These are starting to get hot, very warm up here at the top. And along the, ooh, that's very hot. I could not keep my fingers on this all the time. If you went along the very top up here, you would, you feel a little bit of pain because it's so hot, right? Because you're putting a lot of wattage out there. That's where the primary heat output is going to be, um, the heat buildup. And then, of course, the buildup is going to be right here in the center middle of the keyboard here. So, yeah, it's in terms of uh, comfortable playing, you know, if you have a, a right hand on your WAS, your right hand's on your mouse, your left hand's on WASD, super comfortable for that. But if you're gonna obviously type or use the laptop on your lap while playing games, ooh, that's gonna be super spicy and way too hot. Uh, yeah, so in this game, in Warzone 2, our target FPS is at least 150 FPS. If we can get to 150, that's what we've seen a lot of the other i9 CPUs hit. Um, that said, we only have an i9 13900HX. Okay, so. Turn this down a little bit. So interesting. We are not hitting nearly as high of FPS as I would ideally love to see. Refreshing the averages right there. Now, I don't like these sights that they gave me on this weapon. Keep hitting this guy for like a bullet or two and then stopping. Um, so our, like the GT77, where where we went with, um, where we do our test right here, that area we are getting like 155 FPS with the i9-13980HX uh, with the higher speed, everything, all, all the stuff for the GT77 and the Blade 18, both of those in the SCAR series, almost all of those were getting closer to the 140 to 155 FPS range, typically. Um, and so it's going to be a little sad if we can't get that high of FPS with this one. New Master, can you test again with DGPU only mode and find what's the difference between DPU and hybrid on? That's a possibility. That could be impacting performance, maybe, but I, I don't think it, it shouldn't. We should be on dedicated GPU only mode because that's what we have set in the NVIDIA control panel and we should be having direct connection. So 
that shouldn't be an issue. Um, so far, we're only doing 98. Let's see when we get down to the ground, see if it's any better. All right, so yeah, so we're still hitting that 98, 100. I'm curious, what if we just went ahead and just disabled DLSS? Does that actually improve our settings at all or improve our performance? No, nah, it's like the same performance, having it enabled or not. Because we're very CPU bound, so GPU just doesn't matter that much. But we've been running it with DLSS on quality mode on all the other tests. Like these are the settings we were testing with the other laptops. And we're getting noticeably less FPS right now. So that's interesting to me. Notice our CPU is pulling 102 watts. Whew, that's a lot of wattage. Our temperature is still very good though. Look at that, 80, 85 degrees on our temps. So um, it makes me feel good on our temps. Unfortunately, our actual FPS, not as high as I would ideally love, that's for sure. I'm looking for another gun if I can get a I need another gun that's decent. All right, we got a decent gun. Let's see if we can kill anybody. There's someone right there. Where'd this guy go? He died already. What the heck? Who killed him? Okay. Well, this gameplay is obviously very good. Uh, it's just not as high of FPS as I would ideally love. Yeah, we got him. Okay. Beautiful. So we got a, at least we got a shot of me killing someone and then we'll take all their stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Trying to exit the game. There we go. So we ended up with 97 FPS for our average, which is certainly below um, what we were getting with the other laptops. Let's try restarting the game, uh, restarting the laptop. That's going to put it into dedicated GPU only mode because we already set that earlier in the Lenovo Vantage software. GPU setting at 88 watts is probably the reason. Um, yeah, 90 watts GPU, that's because it's a very CPU-bound game. You know, when you're in a very CPU-bound game like Warzone 2, the GPU just doesn't boost very high. It really, it, you end up getting bottlenecked by that CPU. So, yeah. You say I'm on silenced or balanced mode, but I, I'm not. You can tell that I'm not because this is a red. It shows red right here. That means you're in performance mode. Um, and Talon, I don't think you were here yet, but we did, uh, we did show the Lenovo software and show that we were in, in performance mode. See, for performance mode right here. And we should be in dedicated GPU mode as well, because that's what I had set it to go to. Interesting. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna restart it, but we're not in hybrid mode right now. And if we go to the NVIDIA control panel, it should probably still be in. Um, 
Oh, we don't even get the option to change anymore. Now that we're in dedicated GPU mode, we don't even get the option to control. Normally this says manage 3D setting or whatever, and it changes, uh, or not manage 3D setting, but it basically manage display mode. And that allows you to switch between Optimus and dedicated mode. We no longer have that option. We are just, you can only see the NVIDIA GPU now, okay? So just know that we are in the correct modes. Let's, let's open up Warzone one more time just to verify this data that dedicated GPU mode either matters or doesn't matter, okay? We're gonna verify this. Now I have about a half hour left of benchmarking before I have to end the live stream. So I wanna do this as quickly as we can and get through as many of these games as we can. Um, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this basically. Uh, Cause I do have, I do have a, a meeting at six o'clock that I have to leave for at six. So I have to do a little bit of prep before that. Battle Royale solos, start a match, and let's see. You want me to cycle the power profiles? Okay, so that's auto. We're in performance mode. I just cycled the power profiles again. Let's open Afterburner, make sure Afterburner's running here. Afterburner no longer has the correct GPU stuff pulled up, so we gotta re-enable that. Because we're in dedicated GPU only mode, so it switches the GPU that it was detected. Flip all this stuff back on again. All right, so now our GPU stuff is located along the bottom. Not a big deal, but there we go. Skinborg says, we'll have to finish the live later. Uh, I have to go to sleep. Good night. Have a great stream. Thanks, Skyborg, for coming. I appreciate all the input. Uh, try Overdive on Cyberpunk. Also, this laptop will handle it much better than the Zephyrus G14. Oh, it, this obviously should handle it way better than the Zephyrus G14. Um, Jonathan Good says, which laptop with 48 or 4090 has the best non-mini non LED display? I'd probably go with the Blade 18 because it. Uh, when I measured it, we got like 570 nits brightness without an, a mini LED. And it had a higher contrast ratio and very high color gamut. So that was probably the best non-mini LED display I've tested so far today, or 2023. Okay, so we'll see if our FPS is noticeably more or less now. All right, so we're still hitting 102 FPS, which is basically right in the right in line with what we were getting before. Um, I don't, I don't know the exact reasons, but we're definitely not getting as much FPS as what we do on the Blade 18, the GT77, those other laptops that we've tested. We were getting noticeably more FPS. We. Um, that said, I mean, this is extremely playable. It's very smooth gameplay. Um, no issues in terms of playability. It's just not as high of performance, right? So with, with dedicated mode enabled, let's see what we get running down the bridge. What's the blade? Uh, what's the fan noise of this laptop compared to the Blade 16? That's a great question. Uh, it's very similar, I would say. They they both have a quieter fan profile with very good performance for the fan noise that they create. Um, yeah, Talon, you may be right that we have some kind of GPU issue. Our GPU is pushing over 100 watts there, um, and I believe we normally. In those other laptops that when we were hitting like 150 FPS, we were getting like, I think we were pushing more like 120 to 130 watts of power to that, uh, to the GPU. 
you know? So, um, all right, so we're running down the bridge. Now we're in dedicated GPU only mode and we're still getting almost exactly the same FPS that we were a moment ago. So I really don't think that dedicated GPU mode does anything at this point. Um, let's try switching to, we're in quiet mode. Wow, that really reduced our, our, our frame rate there. We're in auto mode now. Wow, auto mode, much lower FPS. Oh, we're getting sniped at. Woo. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, our wattage is super low. Going back, let's go into Lenovo. <laughs> let's try turning on the AI. Maybe the AI can fix their problem. Can the AI fix their problem? Balance mode, enable Legion AI to automatically detect gameplay settings. Let's find out if that does anything for us. All right. Interesting. I think our monitor also changed um, brightness levels. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so with AI enabled, looks like we're getting the same performance that we had in performance mode. Our CPU is boosting to 108 watts. Our GPU, though, is only hitting 80 to 90 watts still. So overall, nothing, nothing really improved right there. Um, yeah. So I'm just go back to the performance mode, and we'll go ahead and switch to our next game because we got to keep moving along our benchmarks. So a little bit disappointing with the Warzone performance. We've definitely seen better performance in other laptops in those areas at the same resolution and settings. Um, it could be a driver issue. It could be Lenovo bi Video BIOS or something going on there. But we're definitely getting a little bit of underperformance compared to what you know we were hoping for. It's on Lenovo at that point. Uh, I normally would not see this or know why. I haven't found hybrid mode and seems to be fine and avoid the weird power bug. So we initially tried in hybrid mode. Um, then we went into dedicated GPU only mode. Made no difference, same FPS. But there is a bottleneck somewhere. Um, yeah, I agree, the bottleneck is somewhere and it seems to be artificial. That said, um, I don't know, not sure of the reasoning. Not sure what's going on there. But we just know that we have seen, definitely we've seen uh, higher performance from several other RTX 4090 laptops with the i9-13980HX. So, all right, so moving into CSGO, full screen, we're gonna go to game, we're gonna enable developer console, net graph underscore three, beautiful. Is this the 16 gig RAM or 32 gig RAM Legion? It is the 16 gig RAM. It could be a, some kind of memory rank issue, maybe. We don't really know. Our FPS in CSGO right now, it's just insane. Uh, 500, jumping between 500 and 400 right now. Um, really, really good. 600, jumping between 600 to 700 right now, mainly on 600. CSGO is absolutely insane, the amount of FPS you can get in this game. Uh, Randy McNeely with the $14.20 Super Chat. Because $4.20 is just not enough for all this work when you could be gaming. <laughs> Thanks so much, Randy. That's really funny. Uh, Super Chat. That was great. Um, no, I really appreciate the support, Randy. Thanks so much. Steve Onashi says, LOL, AI. Yeah, I got to love the buzzwords. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think the AI would actually improve our performance in almost any of the games that we're playing. But yeah. Uh, what's the SSD? It's a Samsung SSD. I'm not sure the exact model. Casual Philosopher. No reason to get the 32 gig RAM or 16, 16 gig instead of 32 if you're going to go for a 4090 laptop. Um, I would recommend 32 gigs of RAM if you have the money because... Uh, 32 gigs of RAM is going to be more future-proof. Uh, a lot of games these days are pulling naturally over 16 gigs. Uh, like Hogwarts wants to use like 24 gigs of RAM, like regular RAM. Um, 
At least that's what I've noticed. So uh, a few other games also pushing more than 16. But that said, Hogwarts still runs really well at six, with only 16 gigs of RAM. It just... I think a lot of games want more, even though they technically can optimize down to 16 gigs if they need to. It's kind of weird like that. I don't know. Um, but in general, I think a lot more games are going to want more than 16 in the future too. So in general, I definitely recommend 32. But at least you can always upgrade to 32 at a later time uh, if you want to down the line, if you run into issues. So 524 FPS 0.22, 524.22 for our CSGO benchmark. That is phenomenal that is right up there and being very competitive with all of the other laptops we have tested at this resolution so uh that's very good moving into cyberpunk 2077 and we will try to run one time with performance mode and then we'll try one time with the ai mode on balance mode and see if we get any kind of performance gain i don't think we will but we'll find out um How's the noise levels on this? Would you consider a laptop for pro audio work? Um, this laptop is probably very good for pro audio work. I'm not sure about the latency. I don't test latency with latency mon or anything like that. Um, but this certainly has enough performance for it. So that's the, you could definitely do audio work with it and you definitely have pretty good speakers above average speakers in the system for the onboard audio, but any professional audio person's probably going to use really high end, um, you know, headphones like the Bayer dynamic, like $500 headphones or something. So, um, yeah, you could definitely use this for some audio work without a doubt. LSP says Legion pro seven, I and scar 16 in Australia, both have 40, 80 price could be similar. With end of the year sales coming up, looking to buy either one of the laptops. A run with 20, 20x Android emulators. Interesting. Well, the Scar is going to have a little more. Um, the Scar is going to have a little bit more uh, CPU performance if it's become CPU bound. So we're going to turn on frame generation. We're going to go to quality DLSS. I believe we're already on ray tracing ultra but I'm going to make sure that we're on the right setting. So we're on Ray Tracing Ultra, frame generation enabled, quality. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark and find out what we get. Here we go. I'm excited. Uh, new Master says, I think AI can help for temperatures. I guess temp in AI mode is lower than performance mode. Interesting thought. Interesting thought. All right. So here we are. We are... In the benchmark now, uh, the CPU is pulling 77 watts. The GPU pulling 150 watts, which is interesting. Well, we pushed over 200 watts there for a second. We got 200 watts TDG, TGP on this GPU right here. We saw that. We take the screenshot. <laughs> 200 watts. Okay. Uh, 69 degrees on the GPU. Uh, that's very good. CPU temperature also excellent for pulling that high of wattage. Um Overall, we're moving into an area with a lot of different AIs coming out into this open space. Usually pushes a little bit more CPU performance. Um, I just gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that our GPU is only at 150 uh, watts right now because I think a lot of the other laptops were pushing higher GPU wattage through this section, even though we're doing higher CPU wattage. Um, like, for example, on the SCAR 16 and 18, I think it was doing a combined total of like 270 watts through this area. And this laptop right now is only doing about 250 watts total through this area. And our performance is also a little bit lower. Uh, only 125 FPS here. Uh, it's still very good. That said, uh, we, we need to retest a lot of laptops because Cyberpunk went through a huge patch update with adding uh, new ray tracing settings. Uh, and I believe the way they measured the benchmark results were a little bit different now. 125 FPS for our average FPS, which is very good. Our min looks like it was 56 FPS. Uh, let's go ahead and swap over to AI mode, balanced mode, enable AI. Here we go. What's going to happen? Is the age of AI upon us? 
125.56. Okay, 125.56. Those are our, our results. Let's find out what we get. Zabalds with the $10 super chat says Legion has a good offer on BNH right now, $22.99 for a 4080 with one gig SSD or one terabyte SSD, I think what you meant. 32 gigs of RAM, 4090 with 32 gigs, one gig, 2799. Both have 3900 HX. Best deal you can get. Thank Gizmo for the stream today. Can't wait for mine. Yeah, that sounds like a better deal than the Lenovo website. Um, I should probably put that link into the video description as well. Uh, right now, I believe we're getting less FPS, less SP, less FPS than we were in performance mode. All right. I mean, look at that. We're going. I think we were in the 120s the whole time inside. Um, going outside here now, we're getting one to the 130s. Into the 120s again. Our one percent lows are phenomenal at 95. I want to point out the one percent lows are juicy. Really great 1% lows after dealing with all these 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 laptops where the 1% lows are sucking. Uh, it's great to see, you know. So you can see right here we're pulling 9.7 gigs on the VRAM, um, almost 10 gigs on the VRAM, 10 gigs on the VRAM now. So uh, looks like we're going to end up averaging very similar to what we had before, but maybe just a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know. It's hard to tell. 124. The age of AI comes crumbling down with this one result. They have failed, all right? It's just true. We got 1% more in performance mode, or one FPS more in performance mode than in AI mode. So um, sorry, AI mode. Trash. You lose. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> So obviously a very good performance for all ultra settings with ray tracing enabled for cyberpunk. Really, really good. Uh, the AI mode, it sounded about the same in terms of the fan speed. I would actually have to run those back uh, side by side in split screen mode to really be able to evaluate them and see if I really saw there was much of a difference in terms of, oh, this GPU is pulling higher wattage or the CPU is pulling higher wattage um, in the AI mode versus the uh, performance mode, so not sure. But anyway, LSP says, can you try overdrive? I believe overdrive is already enabled in Lenovo Vantage, but the overdrive, all it does is, um, yeah, overdrive is already enabled. It's been enabled since Apex. Um, overdrive just makes the screen more responsive. It doesn't really change performance. Brandon McNeely says, good value machine. Um, yeah, this is definitely putting some great value out there. Uh, for the price, it's very competitive with the Omen 17, very competitive with the SCAR 16. I, I think the Omen actually did beat this, though, in the same test. But I think that was also at 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's not a fair test. Yeah, I'd have, to I'd have to test it again probably at 16 by 10 aspect ratio because uh, it's slightly higher resolution. So, um, yeah. But they're very, very extremely competitive performance results right now on this Pro 7i so far uh, with the other laptops. So, Okay, going into our settings. I think our... Resolution is incorrect. Yes, it is. We're at 1080p. We want to go up to our max resolution. And refresh rate. All right. We're on ultra preset, which is where we want to be. DLS is on quality. That's where we want to be. We'll continue this. Let's see where we're at. So uh, doing 120, 130 FPS right now. We had a 1% low stutter drop us down, but um, it's coming back up, it looks like, our 1% low going to 38 right now. Everything's looking very smooth, very juicy. Some really great performance, and honestly, uh, really great performance with really great temperatures right now. We've had 
a lot of laptops this year just get brought to their knees in terms of thermal throttling on the CPU. Every single Ryzen laptop I've tested so far just maxes out the CPU to 95 degrees or 100 degrees. Um, the Zephyrus, the Zephyrus G14, or maybe no, the Legion, the Legion Pro 5 did 102 degrees in in dead space. So. At least in this one right now, we've got uh, 84 degrees, 83 degrees on that i9 CPU, which is just really, really great. I love to see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk. We're resetting. We're walking. Um, interesting, we kind of had a dip in FPS for some reason. I'm just going to go back. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Maybe it's real. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Well, we're going to go and we're going to see what we get. All right, so we're walking. 115 FPS, 30 for our 1% lows, a bit on the low side for our 1% lows. That's one thing with the Ryzen chips this year. The 1% lows were almost always a bit better than the uh, than the Intel. Um, but the temperatures were usually spicier than the Intel. Um, so it's a bit, it's very interesting. And in some ways, uh, like if the Intel 1% lows are at least 30, 40 FPS, it's, it's kind of going to be harder to tell um, the difference in smoothness. That said, uh, if the 1% lows are really bad, you can really tell a difference between the Ryzen and Intel. So because um, 1% lows, when they're, when they're both over 100 FPS, if the 1% low is double on the Ryzen or on whatever laptop, then the 1% low is honestly a more important value than getting a few more FPS for our, your maximum average. Um, so right here, we got 128.30. That is really, really good. I believe that beats the SCAR 18. Uh, I believe that beats the GT77. Um, overall, really great performance coming out for the uh, Legion Pro 7 in this Dead Space test. That's phenomenal. Let's move into Dying Light 2. Steven Ashley says, I almost bought the Omen 174090 when there was a 23049 con config deal, but then HP charges 15% on the restocking fee. Ooh, gotcha. Still driving my old reliable Strix G18. Nice. How's the Strix G18? Have you noticed any tapering off in your um, in your uh, coil wine? Niebuhr says to disable the E cores that are slow and one percent lows definitely improve. That's an interesting uh, that's an interesting suggestion and might be worth uh, might be worth a live stream. Might be worth a whole live stream. Trying to test like five games, get your get your baseline, and then do a uh, comparison with E cores disabled. And then another interesting live stream would be like disabling P cores and just running E cores maybe for battery life. See if that actually improves it or not. <sighs> DLS on quality, frame generation enabled, um, full screen. Let's go ahead and save these settings. I just changed the full screen. That's all we changed there. Excellent. This is good. High quality ray tracing preset. Let's see what we get in Dying Light 2. How much was this? Uh, so the retail price was 3,100 approximately. And then I used one of the coupon codes, I think extra five or something like that. And I got another 50 bucks off or something. So I think it was just just a hair over $3,000 is what I paid for this unit. Oh my goodness, 158 FPS right now in Dying Light 2. That is phenomenal. That is really good performance. Um, wow. Steve, Steve now she says, coil wine showed up on day one and disappeared another. I have OCD and my therapist tells me not to fixate on such things. LOL. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want to fixate on certain things, especially if it really doesn't matter in the long run. Um, like if you use headphones all the time anyway. Uh, Randy McNeely says, no coil wine on my Strix G18. Nice. That's good. Uh, LSP says, can you live stream with different laptops running Cyberpunk with ray tracing on overdrive? Interesting. That, <laughs> you really love ray tracing on overdrive, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I 
That's funny. Um, uh, I think so. Niebuhr, I think you, you said Niebuhr says quite possibly implying that they could get better gaming performance with the e cores disabled. Uh, he says e cores equal low single thread performance with a higher latency. Anything that needs instant response must not be should not must not be run on e cores. Period. Um, right, and I think I tend I tend to agree with that. But the thing is. I think uh, games by default and Intel are smart enough to run the games through the P cores. Or they should be. If they're not, then that's a real problem. So we got 153 FPS with 49 for our 1% lows. 1% lows don't really matter in this one, but 153 overall for our uh, average, which is phenomenal. That's above average. We've seen a lot of laptops, including the SCAR series, do like 144. So 153 is definitely above average um, for Dying Light 2 at this resolution and settings. And obviously it's insanely smooth. That's gonna be a really great gaming experience. Arturius Knight says, how do you disable eCores? Usually you disable eCores through your BIOS. Sometimes in your control software, you can disable in Windows, depending on the, uh, I think Asus, for example, lets you disable eCores in your, uh, armory crate uh but usually if you can disable the e-cores on most laptops it'll be in the bios um okay so we're at 2560 by 1600 v-sync is off 16 by 10 aspect ratio dlss is on quality graphics is on all ultra settings let's hop into the game and see what we get It is mind blowing the amount of FPS you get on the 4090 compared to like the 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70s. Um, like I've been testing, like, so initially I was testing almost all 40, 80, 40, 90 laptops. And now going back to uh, test now, and then I went to test 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 laptops for the last 10 or so laptops I tested. And now going back to a 40, 90 laptop, it's like, holy schmoly. Like we were only getting like 50 something FPS, like 55, 60 ish for this Zephyrus G14 in this same test. And now we're doing 115. It is literally double the FPS going with a 4090 laptop. <laughs> like double. You're paying double the price, but you're getting literally double the FPS. Okay, here we go. Like, you know, you can totally play this game at 60 FPS and have a phenomenal time. God of War does not need that high of a response rate or, or FPS to enjoy it. But the increased smoothness is quite nice. Uh, 114 FPS, 36 for a 1% low. 1% uh, low is a bit lower than what we saw on most of the laptops, but our, one per, our, our average, it feels very smooth. I'm not seeing any stuttering or anything, so it's a little weird that our 1% low is so low. Um, but overall, extremely Extremely good performance here in God of War. You're going to have a, a fantastic time playing games in God of War. Let's move on to Hogwarts Legacy. Um, we've got... I would like to do... So, I've got 10 minutes. I'd like to do... Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider... Witcher 3, Last of Us, Hogwarts. I don't know if we can do them all. We'll see how many we can get done. I want to do at least do Hogwarts and The Witcher 3. Those are the next two. And then we'll see if we have time for one more. Oh, we got to do a summary too of everything. So uh, let's do... Man, we're so close to getting all the games in for the benchmarks today. I'm just running low on time. Uh Muriel Bergala says, should I switch from an Aura 17X4090 to this? I only have one day, LOL. Should I wait for the Aura 17X BIOS update? I got it on the Best Buy for 3.3K with Geek Squad protection three years. Well, that's a good deal with the Aura 17X with the Geek Squad protection for three years. That's a great deal, uh, Muriel Bergala. Uh, I, would say, I would say that you are going to get a little more performance on the Legion Pro 7i, but that both of the laptops are phenomenal laptops uh, in terms of fit finish and build quality 
The display, I think, is a little more colorful on the Aura 17X, but a little bit brighter on the Legion Pro 7i. Um, so if it was my money, I would go with the Legion Pro 7i because it is tuned better and has a better BIOS and the, the GPU and the CPU are going to hit higher levels of performance. And the brighter screen, I don't know if that's more valuable to me or a higher color gamut screen is more valuable. It's about the same in terms of quality and, and brightness and all that. But on, on the Legion Pro 7i, I feel like you have less bezels around the display and it's a more modern design. Yeah. And I think the keyboard layout and feel is just a little better on the Legion Pro 7i as well. So yeah, I, if, it was, if it was my money, I would have bought the Legion Pro 7i over the Aura 17X. But um, if you're enjoying the Aura 17X and you've got the performance you're looking for and the games you're looking and the, the games you're looking to play, it's and it's not it's not like you have to return the Aura 17X. I think it's a great laptop. So, but if you're if you're for those of you who are just buying a new laptop, yeah, I would I would go with the I would go with the 17 or the the Legion Pro 7i over the 17X. Uh, Casual philosopher, sorry. Let's get, I got to make sure our settings are correct. DLSS is on quality. We need to enable frame generation. We're on the correct resolution there. Frame rate set to 60. We need to uncap the frame rate. We're going to set textures to low just because we're, that's how we're benchmarking everything. And we need to enable ray tracing. Ah, oh, now we need to restart the game. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, we got to restart the game. It's going to have to rebuild all those shaders and everything again, which takes like four minutes. Um, yeah. Okay, hopping back into the game again. Hogwarts Legacy. Hurrah! Oh, yes. Okay, so while this is loading, we are going to start. We are going to start into a summary of the laptop, everything we've discovered so far. Okay, even though we're going to do, we're going to keep doing benchmarks while we're we're talking about this, just to be time efficient. I'm going to need to end the live stream here uh, in a little while, or you know. So let's just go right ahead. Everything we've discovered about the laptop. We got 490 nits brightness on the display. Very bright, good display, but the color gamut's not as high. We get close to 100% sRGB, about 80% of the Adobe and P3 color gamut when adjusting for my color gamut on my tool. The contrast ratio, 1020 to one was very good or a little bit above average, um, but not as good as the mini LED. The display is definitely not as good as the some of the higher end, more expensive premium 4090 laptops. That said, I really love the design of the Legion Pro 7i. It feels uh, very premium. It feels a little bit more uh, a, a built like a tank uh, because of, it uses a lot of metal and it's minimal bezel around the, the laptop. You've got a nice webcam, ni nicer, a little bit above average webcam, not amazing. Overall, very good experience. And the temperatures that we've seen in all of the games has been very good. We've been getting the GPU has been in the 75 to 80 range in most of the games. The, the CPU has been in the like typically 70, 65 to like 90 range, but usually in the 75 to 80 range in a lot of the games that we've tested. And so going back into Hogwarts now, um, we'll see what we get, but I'm anticipating good performance here. And, you know, every game that we've played so far has been playable, with minimal stuttering, good 1% low performance. Um, so we're just gonna do a quick run through Hogsmeade. Uh, you know, as we load in everything, this this game is a game where you might get stuttering because we're using all of our RAM right now. We're at 15.6 gigs of RAM usage and we only have 16 gigs of RAM. So again, this is a game that likes to have 24 gigs of, of RAM. So please keep that in mind. That might be related to our 1% low stutters. Um, in addition, uh, this area is just hyper complex. It loads tons, it needs to load tons of NPCs into 
um, the foreground as we run around here. And that also, you know, uses a lot of the RAM. So, so yeah, this is one of the most demanding areas of Hogwarts, probably the most demanding area because there are so many NPCs. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run through Hogsmeade now and see what we get. Our, our total FPS has been very good. We're getting quite a few little stutters as NPCs and buildings load in, which I would attribute to our RAM being used up. Our VRAM is not being maxed right now. We're using a, sh a little bit over eight gigs of VRAM. We ended up with 94.9 for our total FPS. It kind of, in my opinion, dropping in 32 gigs of RAM would probably fix this and give us a much higher 1% low. If we run, if we were to run to areas with less NPCs, we would have um, a lot better 1% lows. All right, so that's Hogwarts. Let's go ahead and move into The Witcher 3. And let's continue talking about the laptop and continue the summary, okay? So this laptop has a really good keyboard. Um, it, it's, it's got a, a let, me, let me show you the keyboard a little bit here, right? So the, the keyboard's not only backlit, all the secondary symbols are backlit, but you also have great secondary functions with your volume, your uh, brightness going up and down, your um, number pad being full size, the arrow keys being full size. The layout is phenomenal. The touchpad is no longer glass, but it feels pretty good still. And the click is excellent. The click feels really good. Um, I do like this touchpad overall still. And the port selection on this laptop is also above average, without a doubt. So if you're someone who is trying to maximize um, like just the value that you're getting from the laptop, not only are you getting a great keyboard, you're getting a good touchpad, maybe not the most premium feeling one because of the texture of it not being glass, but it's still a very good overall keyboard. And you're not gonna really, keyboard and touchpad. The keyboard is close to the best, if not the best you can get in any laptop. The touchpad is not close to the best, but it's fully functional and you're not gonna have a problem with it, I don't think. Um, the speakers on this thing were good. You had noticeable bass, pretty clear highs, a little bit muddled mids. This could probably be improved a bit with the Nahemic software. And it's good volume. It's like I gave it an 8.8 .8 on speaker quality, which is noticeably above average and better than the vast majority of laptops out there. Now, um, this uh, we're in The Witcher 3 now. And this is a this is a game that is features frame generation and now has ray tracing, uh, phenomenal storytelling, and it can be really taxing on your laptop if you uh, if you especially if you don't have frame generation on and you're trying to run ray tracing, um, it can be, you can really struggle to hit 60 FPS. So um, the new 4000 series really definitely help in The Witcher 3. Let's go ahead and see what we get with our one run through test that we normally do coming down these stairs and running out to the lake. Okay, so here we are. I've reset it. We're sprinting. We got 100 FPS right now with 33 for our 1% lows. Yeah, Witcher 3 is one game that I have been meaning to go back and beat all the way through. I've played it, I don't know, probably about 25% of the way through and I really loved it, but it just didn't quite truly um, immerse me. And then I kept getting unimmersed because the quest lines were just kind of muddled and hard to complete sometimes. You're like, wait, how do you complete this quest? It just didn't make sense sometimes. So I need to go back and just look up you know, quest guides on the ones I get stuck on. Anyway, so 118.38, that's very good FPS. Uh, phenomenal performance here in The Witcher 3. Let's continue talking about this laptop, all right? Uh, so this laptop, to me, is the complete package in that it's got really just great performance all around at a very good price. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio design for the laptop itself. It's got a metal build. 
The biggest drawbacks to this thing compared to a lot of other laptops is like, for example, you could save a lot of money going with like the Omen 17. It might be several hundred dollars cheaper than this one, um, but that's a plasticky build. This is a more metally build. You're paying for that. You're also paying for the 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. You're paying for this almost bezel design going around the sides of the laptop. Um, and you're paying for the other features on it, like the per-key RGB lighting, the light bar going across the front. I like the display um, overall. It's not as premium as what you're gonna get in the more expensive laptops, but the performance you're getting for the money is very, very good. We did see higher performance in some of the other laptops like the GT77 Titans. Uh, CPU default thermals were higher than this. Um, I want to do another live stream. I'm going to do another live stream tuning this Pro 7i to the maximum level of performance. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that future live stream, the tuning of this machine to get it to the peak level of performance. We're gonna undervolt the CPU, we're gonna raise the power limits, we're gonna max the fans out, we're gonna try overclocking the GPU further more than what the default overclock is capable of, and we're gonna see what kind of performance gains are possible when you put your mind to it. Um, I think you could see probably five to 10% performance gains for sure in the CPU department, another 5% maybe in the GPU department. Um, and I'd love to try to try to figure out like, why did we get so much less performance in Warzone 2? Is there any way we can optimize that and actually get uh, comparable performance to some of the other laptops? In the vast majority of games that we had today, we saw comparable, if not better performance in the Pro 7i to almost all the other 4090 laptops. But in Warzone 2, for some reason, we were getting like 45 to 50 FPS less than the other top end laptops like the SCAR 18, SCAR 16, Blade 18, GT77, all of those were doing so much more FPS in the same areas. So we need to get to the bottom of what's going on with that. Uh, it's probably something related to driver or BIOS issues, and it might just require a driver or BIOS update from Lenovo to fix that. Um, it may not be something that we can fix on our end. Can I recommend the Legion Pro 7i? Absolutely, this is a great value for the money. It's one of the best value RTX 4090 laptops that you can get. I do still think that the Omen 17 technically is a bit more bang for the buck, especially if you can get it when it, it does one of these sale days, like where it goes $200 off. But the Legion Pro 7i sometimes does those sale days too. And sometimes you can get this for less than $3,000 if you get it on the right sale day. Now, if you do decide to buy this laptop and you wanna support me as a content creator, there is a link in the description down below, which you can use to buy. And if you do buy it through that link, it does help support me. But you also got to use a browser that allows cookies to be tracked and stuff like that. So if you use blockers, ad blockers and tracking blockers that won't really track it. So um, that's it. I also want to point out that there are coupon codes to this. I use the coupon code extra five, but sometimes it's like game extra five or game April or, you know, whatever, whatever coupon code is going on at the moment. Um, I do check uh, Google to look for coupon codes. If I ever go buy a Legion laptop, I just automatically always check for coupon codes. So be sure to try to do that. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna interfere with my uh, commission as an affiliate, it probably will, but whatever, I'm trying to help you guys as much as I can. Another way you can save some money buying the Legion Pro 7i is through Micro Center. So Micro Center sometimes has good deals on the Legion laptops uh, for direct sale, but usually you have to go in store to get those deals and you can't get those through online. So that's kind of a bummer sometimes. Um, yeah, and I never get affiliates for mentioning Micro Center, even though they sometimes offer the best deal. So just know that that's my honesty to you and my commitment to you as a reviewer to try to guide you to the best deal at the expense of my own money. I literally probably just lost a good chunk of money by mentioning that. So I want you to know that I'm here for you and that's my priority and that's why I think I'm a trustworthy reviewer and why you should trust me. Um, I've reviewed almost every RTX 4090 laptop that is for sale right now and I think this is definitely close to the top three in terms of value and bang for the buck. It's probably not the most premium 4090 laptop that you can get, especially since you can get an 18 inch one or a mini LED one, but if you're on any kind of a budget, this is one of the most attractive feature sets for the money, which I think makes it a fantastic option for you. Um, for those of you that are Legion fans and you're, you're in, into this style, um, this build quality, it's really great laptop, I think. It's hard to find complaints about it. 
Um, the biggest complaints are the backtracks from 2021 version, which I talked about earlier in the live stream. Just like, um, you know, I'm not going to go over all of them right now, but uh, if you enjoyed this live stream review, please hit the like button and hit the notification bell, uh, hit the subscribe button, come back and hang out with me again when we tune this guy for the optimal levels of performance. Um, what's the battery life estimate on full charge? I have four to six hours is my estimate if you're, depending on how you optimize it for web browsing. Now, if you don't, and that's of course on the integrated graphics card, if you run games on it, it's probably an hour and a half to two hours. If you really optimize it with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth off and brightness down, you might be able to push more than six hours, like six, seven, maybe eight hours at most with idling. You know, so not the best battery life in the world, but also not horrific, right? It's per some pretty decent battery life, depending on how, if you can optimize it properly. Um, that's it, guys. I actually went seven minutes over. We're now late to my parents' house. We're going to a dinner uh, concert thing. So we really got to go. Otherwise, I would probably stay in chat and answer some questions. But more live streams with this coming up. We'll overclock, we'll undervolt, we'll have a lot of fun. And of course, lots more reviews coming up soon of uh, more gaming laptops as well. So thank you so much to everyone that's a member and everyone who donated today and everyone who subscribed and liked the live stream. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Brandon out. Bye-bye.